You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning, and hello, kids. <laughs> Welcome to season three and episode number 101. If you're a Depeche Boat fan, that means something to you, of the Daily Beaver here on the Cryer Media Network. Today, recording day is Tuesday, April 18th, 2023, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a pretty nice day here at the Beaver Lodge, and maybe today will be the first tennis. I've been trying to get the first tennis of the year in since Friday and cannot find partners. <laughs> but I have a match scheduled today, so hopefully it goes all the way through. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? and with me, as always, is my dear friend, Mr. Grizzly, and as Kitlin M says, Mr. Grizzly looks like he's dressed to go into space. <laughs> of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Uh, we have a Tuesday morning, I would assume, nibble for you, but who knows. Uh, but first, we must say hello to our dear friend, Mr. Grizzly, and ask him, how's your mental health doing today, sir? Good morning, Mr. Beaver. Um, we're not going to talk about my mental health today. Oh, okay. Not good. Okay. Not good. So we'll just gloss right over that and uh, try and get this show done. Okay. So. Well, I'm sending you big hugs then, my friend. Thanks. Big, big hugs. Um, all right. Uh, in the headlines, uh, we will be finding out around 9 p.m. tonight whether or not our public servants are going to be going on strike. That's the deadline they have uh, given. Uh, if there is no agreement reached by 9 tonight, um, starting at uh, 12.01, we basically have a uh, general strike going on. Uh, that's what uh, uh, Chris Elwood, I believe, was the, oh, I can't remember if he's the, they call him the president, but he's the, the head of the union, uh, the Public Service Alliance of Canada. Um, it seems that the treasury board has made it, well, it seems that the two main issues, one is money, because sometimes, you know, there's a strike like when we have teachers and they're worried about quality of the classroom and it's not so much about money, but this time it is about money, uh, because, you know, 
inflation cost of living has been going up and some of the people that have been getting the smallest wage increases over the past while have been the public servants. In fact, I think, you know, they keep on saying that wages have been up uh, 4, 4% or close to 5% in the last year, but the treasury board is only offering 3% per year for three years. Yeah, that's well we- below the cost of living. Yeah, well below the cost of living. It still means people are falling behind. Um, hmm. So that uh, they weren't impressed with that. They have been relatively reasonable, I would say, because all they've been asking for is 13.5. So they haven't even been asking for, or maybe exactly, you know, the what the, what the average wage increase is or something. Uh, but it's yeah, not like they were to catch up to inflation. inflation. Basically. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's not like they came in asking for twenty one, twenty two, or thirty two, or something. It's thirteen point five. So it seems that the it seems that it might be a slight lowball offer from the government. That to, anyway, I look at that and I look at as that as not that far apart, at least on money, and that the government may be coming in with a low enough offer to give themselves a little wiggle room to go up and still not break the bank, but look like they've given something as a PR move. Um, but there's also the issue of uh, very much work at home, which seems to be a big issue. And because none of that is written in the contracts and they would like the stipulations written in the contract. So I'm not sure what would be the smarter move negotiation wise if to get the, um, the work at home provisions first and then go for salary or to get as much salary as you can first and then see if the government would try to sweeten, sweeten the pot with, work at home provisions. So I'm not sure which one's the more important at this time because they're both pretty important because the world mm-hmm. has changed with the way we work at home and people don't people just don't want to go back. People just don't want to go back. And like you were saying in the last episode, the workers are now starting to have some power. Yeah, they are are starting to have some power and it's understandable why people don't want to go back. Uh, it's not just for those who are possibly uh, immunocompromised or you know, just uh, maybe, maybe, and it's been exacerbated by the pandemic and, and the isolation that many of us, millions of us have faced is that uh, social anxiety um, has, has crept in and reared its ugly head so that people who are not good in crowds, who uh, I wouldn't say are introverted per se, but just get nervous in larger crowds of people mm-hmm. have, you know, it, it, that's been amplified quite a bit. And, and let's look at the fact that, uh, you know, especially in the city of Ottawa here, where we have 125,000 federal public servants, most of which who have to commute. Uh, there are a lot who live in the downtown core, like myself, but, uh, you know, most of the people that live in center town, Ottawa, which is the, the core of, of Canada's capital, are, are working class and poor. Uh, most middle class tend to live in the suburbs. And, you know, the commute to get here, well, our our, our public transit system is... It works when it feels like it. Yeah. It's a little temperamental. <laughs> we we bought a train system that doesn't work in ice or snow. Apparently, Quebec City is looking at buying the same one. Oh, don't. They have worse winters. I was I, I was just they. No. There was no snow on the ground here when I went to see Depeche Mode, and there was still snow up to my waist in certain yeah. spots in Quebec City. Quebec City gets a lot of snow, and you got to remember the Massif is so close, which is is the. A resort in Eastern Canada where if you want to ski, you can go right now and the conditions are amazing because there's, there's still tons of snow. <laughs> so yeah, you know, the commute and, and then you add into the, the, the commute uh, costs to people that they've not had in the last three years. So all of a sudden they've gone right. from, you know, saving thousands of dollars, oh, yeah. uh, let alone on, on, on clothes, laundry, the running around, the stress of getting back and forth to work, the time lost in the commute, which takes away from your quality of life. And a lot of employers are really trying to stress quality of life is important. Work-life balance is important. Well, then why are you taking away from me? Why are you trying to diminish my quality of life and my work-life balance? Right now, I log on at 8 a.m. I log off at 4.30 p.m., my, my, my free time is my free time. You know, the old adage of eight hours of work, eight hours of uh, leisure, eight hours of sleep, 24 yep. hour cycle. But the eight hours of work is usually around 10 to 12 when you factor in commute times and travel times yep. and la, 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 la. So that and diminishes your leisure. Time. Pardon? And often unpaid overtime. 
Often unpaid overtime, yes. And productivity mm-hmm. from work from home has been proven to be exponentially better because yeah. the distractions aren't there. You have something in front of you, you can work on it. And they go, yeah, but they might take a nap. Well, okay. So, Did they get their work done? Yeah. Then what? Who cares? Exactly. As I was always, there's certain jobs like that, right? I mean, if you're in some place where you have to put this nut in this bolt, like this, you have to literally be there. Fine. If you're a surgeon, you have to be there. You know, there's certain things you have to be there. But I mean, anything that where you don't have to be there, because if you have a deadline, whether you do the work between nine and five, regular, whether you do the work between midnight and six, so long as the work gets done on time, on deadline, and in its quality. That's all that matters. Treat people That's like adults. All that matters. Treat people like adults. That was the one thing I didn't like when I was in the public service. You know, you had a dentist appointment. You had to like tell your boss, you're not going to be there. Of course, you need to tell people you're not going to be there. But then you had to fill out a form and all that for like for two hours that you didn't work. And then you had to, and so like, why would I fill out a form and have two hours docked off my pay rather than saying, you know what? I'm a grown up. I took two hours to go to the dentist this day. Yes, I cleared with the boss to make sure I wasn't needed at that particular time or whatnot. And I recuperate my two hours at some point during the week. Yes. Without filling all the paperwork, all these forms, like, like I'm, I'm a grown up, right? Well, and I think pe- pe- people have like liked that. Like you were saying, it, it costs money to work, right? Getting to and from work, your bus well, pass, you, you, your, your walking shoes if you walk to work, you know, your car parking costs money. Lunches if you're if you're brown bagging it, if you're not brown bagging it, if you stop at the, the food more. court and pick something up, you probably stop at the food port and you pick up a coffee, you know, your clothes, you dry cleaning if you need that at some point. If you're buying suits, if you're you know, all that type of stuff, and you don't have an expense account for that because you haven't reached a high enough level, well, they'll pay you. <laughs> pay well, for your suits. Here's a comment from Linda M uh, that I'm gonna put on the screen yep. because this is good. I'm glad you did that. This is t- something that needs to be taken into context. You know, yep. you might be able to get your work done, but not every... I'm very, very, very lucky that I do not work in a toxic environment. And as a matter of fact, the building, the office that I work in, the Crown Corp that I'm contracted to because I'm not an employee, part of their vetting process in the hiring is weeding out toxic people. Mm-hmm. Like the... They, they spend more time trying to establish what the individual's EQ and I, EQ is less so than their IQ because mm-hmm. their, their, their mentality is you might not be uh, the best at this particular uh, skill set, but we can train you to be better yeah. and you, you can, can learn, learn to that. be better. You can learn to be better, but if you, if you, you might be the greatest in the world at this particular skill set, but if you are, uh, well, let's be polite and say a negative Nelly. You're not going to work here. You're not going to fit in. You are going to be detrimental to, um, well, every other employee. What was it that the U.S. Yeah. Navy used to say? A single drop of oil in the water supply can can poison the water supply for the entire ship. Mm-hmm. It's the same. It's the same idea. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, a negative toxic individual in the workplace makes it rough for everybody. And I'm sure every single one of us watching and listening to this podcast has had a work environment where they dreaded going into work because they knew where they were going to see a specific individual that day that was, j- and you were anxious about it, right? I've been there. I know you've been there. And I don't know of anybody. Too. I don't know of anybody who can't say that. Where you've had, it's like, oh, I got to work with this person today. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, my sweetie's going through that too. Yeah. And it's just, like it's no way to live. There's always one. There's the always office. one. See, I'm lucky. <laughs> the current situation I'm in, I don't have that. Uh, we have mature adults. And again, part of the vetting process. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You need to be able to fit in with this team to work here. And and what you have to have is a positive, positive work attitude. Mm-hmm. We all have terrible things going on in our lives. Compartmentalize it and leave it at home. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, we, we will talk about our lives, but we only tend to talk about the pleasant and good things in our lives. Mm-hmm. When I'm at work with my coworkers, I don't talk yeah. about negative stuff. 
Right. Although I will go to my boss if I'm having a particularly bad mental health day and say, yeah, I'm not doing great right now. So I'm just going to go tuck myself away in this area of the building and work on my stuff. And they're like, no problem. No problem. We yep. understand. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, you know, I, again, I'm very lucky. Not most people, I'd say the vast majority of people that live and work in this country do not have what I have. So I don't take it for granted. I'm mm -hmm. grateful for it every single day I go to work every day. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's like I keep on saying, right? You're spending at least a third of your life there and you're spending time away from your family and friends and doing other things that you love. So you better appreciate the people you're working with and for yep. because we're all saying it gets very long, very yeah. long. <laughs> um, eight hour day feels like a 16 hour day and nobody wants exactly. that. Right. And uh, like I've seen the comments from the kits here in the, in the chat and it's, yeah, I mean, work at home in the contract would set a good precedent for private sector workers to go after what they want to. That's what Linam says, and that's what the president of the union says too. Right? When the government doesn't pay its employees well, doesn't give good benefits, that affects the overall work pool because there's always this tendency to want to drag down. Right? When we hear the public service and the private sector, the private, you know, they always turn around and says, "Oh, well, why don't we pay people?" You know. Like in the private sector, why don't we pay people, pay people, pay people like in the private, in the public sector? But whenever they say, "How? Why don't we pay people like we do?" They always pick the lower option. Of they course, want to bring the private yeah. either down to private down to the public or the public down to the private. In certain, so for example, if you're not getting lots of good benefits in private in the in the private sector, but getting good benefits on the public sector, then they try to cut the benefits in the public sector to match the private sector. Mm. But if the salaries are higher in the private sector than in the public sector, wow. <laughs> then, that, then the then the reverse applies right so um so yeah it really does matter and that's one of the reasons why for example for which the federal government did do the mandatory 10 day six leave in federally regulated uh, industries mm -hmm. so as to create a pressure point of demand well if you don't want to give me this then i'll go work for the public sector well, it's all oh, okay. Well, we'll give it to you. So that's how they try to influence that. Uh, so you're right, Kit Lindam, that's true. And then Kit Jim goes, How much money would we save if we didn't have to pay for all the buildings downtown to house people connecting remotely to computers in another building? I absolutely agree. Now, on the other hand, of course, with more people working at home, there is an economic impact because all the businesses that are in the mm -hmm. areas of where all these office towers are. So when you go out to do a little errand during the day because it's close to downtown, you say you go pick up, you know, uh, a loaf of bread and a couple of cans of things that you needed during your lunch break, you know, or, you know, a tube of crazy loo because, you know, you broke your cup, <laughs> you know, all those little things that you got and buy. Well, that isn't there anymore and that affects businesses there. It's, so, I mean, there is an impact diminished. and the government does have to balance it's diminished. that. But you, you do need to understand too that there are over 120,000 people that live in a 1.5 kilometer radius of Parliament Hill, number one. And number two, all of the major hotels are in this area. So uh -huh. you, you have residents and tourism in this part of town. Yes, uh, the, the foot traffic on a daily basis has diminished and restaurants and coffee shops have, have a lot of them have closed. That's yes. There's no denying that. There's no denying that Starbucks has I closed a number of its stores in, in the downtown core. Yeah. A number. I think there's only number three in the core right now. There used to yeah. be like 10. Right. There was one directly across the street from the building I work in closed. It's gone. Yeah. You know, the in one Montreal. that was in the Lord Elgin hotel. Yeah. That's closed. In the train station in Montreal, when I was coming back from Quebec City, I thought, oh, you know, I want a hot chocolate. So I'll go to the Starbucks. It's just outside in the back and in the corner. It wasn't there anymore. Okay, yeah. then I'll go to the Tim Hortons. That's always, no, the Tim Hortons was closed. There was only a second cup in the actual, That's it. that was the only, well, and the and McDonald's. McDonald's. And the McDonald's, yeah, McDonald's. And the McDonald's. Uh, but the coffee store chains, that was it. There was nothing. Admit, I finally the, found the one McDonald's in the Starbucks. The train station is nice, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, the McDonald's. It's a nice McDonald's. It's a nice McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not like the one on Radio Street. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But uh, the, even I, I had to go into the, like the, the national bank building down in the basement somewhere. And all it was, was this little like Starbucks stand. Right. Not mm -hmm. even, not even like an, like an out, like the stand, like in the middle of the floor space. I think, oh boy, things must be, <laughs> things must have shifted big time on that. Um, so the reason why 
the public servants, and this is federal, right? So this will be 155,000 public servants estimated across the country uh, mm-hmm. that could be on the picket lines tomorrow morning, uh, is because, well, they've been at the bargaining table for two full years and haven't been able to get to a deal. So after about 18 months in January, they took a strike vote and it passed and uh, the strike had to be called within 60 days. So we're getting there. So they still tried to, they, they called the strike vote and they didn't go for it right away. Um, and they tried to negotiate and nothing came of it. So now it looks like they're going to do it. And the members gave the union an overwhelming strike mandate so it looks like they're pretty determined um so yeah <laughs> I, I see this kid, this comment from tim mccaffrey about the buses in ottawa the 118 never let me down 118 is a good line tim <laughs> i've been on it good line <laughs> so I, I, gotta, I gotta relay something to you um i read in our uh, comment last night from uh, david moscarp had a tweet our friend david yes. about um why are you punching down on on yes on sector workers earning $40,000 a year. And one woman responded with, well, my son and his girlfriend and her friend both earn $70,000 a year. And I'm like, well, that's, that's an interesting statement, but you do understand that the, the middle, uh, middle income or, or middle class cutoff in downtown Ottawa for a single person, the income needs to be $87,000. So they're $17,000 shy of middle class, which makes them working class try again. $70,000 sounds like a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. It, it might be a lot of money if you live in a small town where your cost of living is diminished by your rent costs, your rental costs and your travel costs because you're able to walk everywhere. But if you live in the downtown core of a capital city like Ottawa, a two bedroom right now averages around $2,400 a month. Now, if you're only earning $70,000 a year, and I say only, Again, that's $17,000 below middle class. So factor in $2,400 a month. Let's say you have a two-bedroom and you, you, you have a two-bedroom because you need to have an office workspace in the home. I have an office workspace in the home in my studio here, but this is literally an extension of my living space. Mm-hmm. It's not a separate room because I'm in a one-bedroom because I couldn't afford a two-bedroom when I rented here 12 years ago my rent is very affordable by today's standards it, it was affordable by by the standards at the time but i can't afford a two-bedroom and i would love i would love to have a bedroom that i could turn into a full-fledged studio i can't afford it i am not a middle-income earner i am below that number by a few thousand dollars and i barely make ends meet now i have a vehicle which I needed for my, my job. Yes. I also yeah, you used, on that. used to have, I used to have a car allowance, yeah. but when the company was purchased, they folded that up. So I'm now less money in my pocket per month. So look, trying to get by as a single person living in the downtown core of Ottawa, Canada, which is not the most expensive city in the country. It's not, it's not easy. $87,000 is the middle class income cutoff for a single person. 87000 I remember when that was considered a lot of money. It's not that long ago. But today, barely middle class. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. It's, you know, when and, they're, and, they're not asking for an arm and a leg. They're just asking for a, a wage increase that gets them to, you know, a livable income. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about here is is often referred to as the single person tax. One of the two main criticisms I've had of all governments over the past 25 years is one, there appears to be absolutely no concerted strategy for rural Canada. None whatsoever. doesn't matter what level of the government, the conservatives seem to do better in rural Canada, but there's no strategy whatsoever. There doesn't seem to be the first party that comes up with a coherent strategy to do something for rural Canada wins, number one. Mm-hmm. And there's never anything for single people. When's the last time you heard of a government saying, hey, we've got a tax cut for single people? We have something for seniors. We have something for children. We have something with families with children. But there's never, ever, ever anything specifically 
for single people. You're alone. You're paying all the rent alone on one salary, all the food alone on one salary, all the increase in hydro bills alone on one salary, and your salary has not gone up. You don't get to split it with two incomes, your household. Single people have been having it really tough <laughs> for a long time, decades. And Very nobody seems to pay any attention attention to them whatsoever. I, no, I just don't get it. They don't, I just don't not, get it. We're not the family unit. so Well, it plays well, right? When you say, well, we're doing it for families with kids. Yeah, but if you always do everything for families with kids and never do anything for families that don't have kids, for people, <laughs> um, you got to balance it out every now and then. Well, this is the thing, you know, it's like I've been taking it on the chin my whole life. Now, let, let, let's, 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 hold, let's hold that for a second. Though. Yeah, let's hold that for but a tax second. wise, it's true. I, it's tax wise. It's very true. I, now I'm not complaining. I'm stating a fact. I'm stating a fact. And I do need everybody to understand that I still understand my, I, I want everybody to know that I understand my place of privilege in this world. That, that goes without saying single hat, cis, yep. white, male, six foot tall, physically fit, mid fifties. I am the demograph that everybody wants to advertise to. I know they keep saying, let's go after the youth dollar. The youth don't have any money. I don't either, but I am the demograph that has money, right? The youth don't have any money because wages have been stagnant for the last 40 years. Productivity has increased exponentially. Wages have remained flat. So going after the youth market is, sure, you know, they spend their disposable income. But if you are a youth who is just getting out of university and getting started, you have no money and massive debt. Massive debt and you don't own anything. You have a document that sits on your wall, which is lovely. And I encourage post-secondary education. I also encourage that we should fully fund post-secondary education. Yes, we should. It's an investment in the nation. There's no reason for which you would not. No, there's no, well, reason, there's to, no solid reason to not. Just to let you know, uh, I don't have a furnace because I'm in an apartment building and they turn the heat off at, uh, usually by April 1st, they kept it running this year, but because it's been so warm out, there's no heat right now. So it's a little chilly in my apartment this morning. That's why I'm <laughs> dressed like this. Um, so kids, uh, should there be a strike? Uh, we have a guest lined up for tomorrow, who has uh, let us know uh, that they have been cleared uh, and they can come and uh, speak to us about what is going on. Okay, so cool. we will have a, uh... it's amazing how uh, we, we've been very fortunate like because we got Keith Bogue, we scheduled mm -hmm. it in advance and it just happened to be the day after <laughs> Trump got arraigned. And uh, this time we have somebody uh, that could be here on uh, the very morning uh, that the strike starts. So um, we are, uh, we're, 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 we're very fortunate and we're very blessed. So let's put it that way. Now, before we go on, uh, because I forgot to do that yesterday when we did the show, and I am so sorry, but I do not want to forget to do it today. I want to say good morning to the kids. So good morning, Kit Ellen, Kit Jim, Kit Jillian. Lovely to see you. Kit Saucy Sea Witch, Kit Ellen. Hello, dear. Ah, so nice to see you. Ah, Mohan. Lovely. How are you today? Hope you're enjoying your morning coffee. Kit Jen, Kit Elaine, Kit Linda M. Wow. Ah, Sadeka. How are you? Lovely to see you. Oh, everybody's here. Ah, Kit Savage Wiener as well. It's like the whole family's here. Kit Tim. Ah, and if I missed you, well, I'm very, very, very sorry. Uh, but thank you so much, everyone. Oh, and James is with us. Mr. Nice like, yeah, yes. what's up, my friend? Lovely to see you. Ah. Well, well uh, James uh, just sent me a message here, and I'm uh, my phone is not, I'm, I can't seem to send respond to messages, so I'll respond quickly with saying, uh, yep. He uh, he wants to test out his equipment because he's got his uh, new uh, um, new microphone, new camera, and new internet connection. So he was like, uh, "If you want a guest at the end of your show, I need to test my equipment anyway." I'm like, "Yeah, we'll bring you in." Okay, sure, sure absolutely. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on in at the end of the show. No problem. We'd like yeah, that very no much. Nice. Oh, we have a new one. Uh, we I see a Chris uh, Kit Christian L. This looks new to me. I may maybe you've been here before, but if you're new here. Welcome. 
Lovely to see you. Ah, it's a wow. Uh, South Stands TFC. It's been a while since we've seen you too. Hello. Good morning, Kit Mel. How are you? <laughs> Kit, Kit Mel goes, who could that be? <laughs> I wonder, Mel, I wonder who that could be. Who who could that guest be for tomorrow? I have no idea whatsoever. <laughs> Guess <it's Wink>. Mel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 not too hasty. <laughs> Don't jump to conclusions. It's Bill. <laughs> cool. cool. Well, you know. I think that's um, awesome. Um, interesting. Uh, well, there's a new end. Well, it seems that everybody wants to be the mayor of Toronto. <laughs> there I saw are somebody no yesterday fewer- wax poetically about how great of a job Chris Sky would do, and I'm like, if you believe that, can I sell you some oceanfront property in northern Saskatchewan? Because the dude is a conspiracy theorist with a coke-addled brain who uh, has lost his grip on reality. If you believe anything this man says and you vote for him, you get what you pay for. And you are paying for a real, real terrible human being. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, indeed. Uh, there are no fewer than 48 <laughs> candidates. Okay, this this is a number. You get a mayor, and you get a mayor, and you get a mayor, and you get a mayor. <laughs> this, this is a number so big, okay, that if this was on, like, Sesame Street and you had the count, yes. like, he would tap out at some point. I love, you, I, you know, I love to count, but this is a little much, huh? <laughs> 48 mayor candidates that is too many too many too many too many for 40 48 really <laughs> so, um yeah and uh well i'm not sure if it's the biggest name of all the 48 but um olivia chow has decided to throw her hat in the ring again. Now, Olivia Chow, as many uh, would know, has run for the mayor of Toronto before and lost to John Tory. And there's a lot of people that are critical of this decision. Now, I have a lot of respect for Ms. Chow in the sense that when she decided to run for mayor of Toronto the first time, she left her job as an MP. And then yes, she did things correctly. Yeah. In a world where Patrick Brown had not left while he was running, and Jason Kenney had not left while he was running, and then we saw Pierre run for leader for how long without doing a single second of work in the House of Commons? Now for he's seat. running for prime minister, which is not a thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Olivia Chow's there, and uh, she's uh, quoted as saying, what makes me stand out in this crowded field is that I have the experience. I have strength. I know how to bring people together. I know how to get results, and that is what I will do. Now, of course, she's a former Toronto City Councillor. I'm not sure in 2023 uh, that I have the experience sells as it used to. Sadly, it does not. Sadly, it does um, not. It, it should. It should, particularly given the series of shit shows we've seen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe there's a reason we don't always go for the total outsider. There might be a reason. <laughs> uh, so like in a reality show. Star president, yeah, yeah, and then I mean, we th- there's always been interesting characters, but you know, oh, Rob Ford, and then I'm, I'm just thinking like like, uh, and I know it's not just Canada, I'm like Canada and the U.S. and it's mostly U.S., but it's like you know, just Rob Ford, Rob Blagojevich, um, the all those Republicans that keep on. St- Creaming about pedophilia, who keep on getting caught right. harassing underage interns and you know being anti-trans and anti-gay, and then we find out that they've commented on like dating apps that are on 
Instagrams. Oh, I like your style. Or, you, you look so handsome. Or it's like, or I was know. just uh, trying to encourage a young man and uh, better his life. And I, have, I appreciate the fact that he's putting efforts into his art. Come on, man. I have a bad back and I needed someone to help carry my bags. Yeah. Uh -huh. That was one. That was one in the state. Someone, a man needed help ca having someone carrying his bag. Z. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. We see you. You know we see you, right? Like you think we don't see you, but you know we see you, right? <laughs> no, they don't because they're so <laughs> blinded by their own ego that they believe they can say and do whatever they want <sighs> and get away with it. Yeah. And they do get away with it for a long time until until the day of reckoning comes. And when that day of reckoning comes, boys and girls, let me tell you something. The Shandon Freud is, well, the sweetest nectar you will ever, ever taste. Because I sit there with a bag of popcorn and a beverage and watch and enjoy. And I know that makes me a terrible person for enjoying someone else's misery. But someone who has been heaping, oh, metric, fuck tons of misery upon humanity for decades finally getting their comeuppance well that's when we rub our hands together and say you know what sometimes the world works out the way it's supposed to the universe does mysterious things have you never heard that before we use that in construction all the time <laughs> so you have you have CHs and FTs in construction, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. How much? MFT. How much? Uh, give me an MFT of that. I'll move it to CH while you're at it. Oh, yeah, Kit Linda, I'm going. So I'm more. terrible right there with you, Grizzly, Mr. Grizzly. <laughs> me too. <laughs> it's like I know, I know, it's I know. wrong to take I joy know. in someone else's misery, but this is misery that they have brought upon themselves. They After have causing so much to others, delighting and causing them to others. They're reaping what they sowed. That's they're what happens. Gleefully, gleefully yeah. causing misery to others. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's just—I don't, I don't know if you caught Jake's show last night. I—I I don't know if you had to catch it. What you can do, our, our buddy, your your old pal Jake. Time. Yeah. Oh, if you get a chance, check it out. It's good. He's got—he had in—he had a couple of clips. He was about to end the show, and he's like, "Encore, okay." And he brings it back, and he brought in this clip about this guy who works for Midas Touch, and I think his name is called Texas Texas Paul, and he looks like a big old redneck Southern boy wearing a big old white cowboy hat, and he is left-wing democrat as you can imagine and he's a he's a good old redneck country boy with one of them thick texas drawls and he would he would sit at the table and enjoy our company immensely i like this guy and and jake's show last night was great so jake if you're watching this morning thanks brother appreciate that effort you put in last night really do i really do i am a big fan of liberal rednecks oh yeah or progressive oh, yeah rednecks, they, they fly they in the them. face right they're progressive That's wonderful it's just yeah. it's just wonderful. Like I love Trey Crowder, the comedian. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, you, 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 you hear, hear that speak, voice? You, 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 oh, wait, what? You hear oh, that voice, oh. but you hear them like say our words, but in that voice is yeah. music to my ears. It really is music to my ears. <laughs> it, it, it really it is. Means, well, it's because it, it's because it you can tell people who are dialed in, switched on, connected to the zeitgeist. They understand how the world really is. And they well, refuse also to have the, 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 the wool of ignorance pulled over their faces. They won't allow it. They're like, no, I, I'm, I am woke and I'm proud to be woke yeah, because but I there's pay also, attention to what's going on around me. But it works on the second, on the other level too, because they sound like that yes, and look like that. It plays on the stereotype. It's like, I know you expect me to expect a guy who sounds like this to not be saying something like this, but I tell you, baby, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> I, I love it. I just love it because it's like, damn, I know it's stereotype, but that sort of like plain, plain talk yeah, I, delivered I with that, that sort of like, I can do I'm that. I'm just being sincere. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that there, Trudeau feller. That Trudeau, I tell you what, that son of a bitch, he's a good son of a bitch. 
<laughs> it's like you pulled the hoodie down and it's, it's like you went from spaceship to breaking bad in 1.4 seconds <laughs> no, sure. okay. i'll put it back oh, up once i get chilly all right yeah, um, now you were talking about especially with the beard the bald head and if i put on yep. a bit of a oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah these guys dared up there in ottawa those sons of bitches i'll tell you what you can get it i can walk amongst them uh, no, like to, say, it's like, it's, uh, yeah, there's not enough i don't own enough soap to get that filth off me <laughs> now mr grizzly if you'd put the, the visual up uh it's uh the tweet uh from david moskrup that you were talking about so oh, you have it yes would you uh, read it sir if you're beating up on government workers who make forty thousand dollars a year and facing massive inflation and just want enough money to get through the day you're a piece of shit my position on this is people should be able to feed and house themselves and asking to not take a pay cut while doing the work to keep the state we all rely on up and running is actually good. And if you're on here or in the newspapers or radio or TV bashing these folks, then you're not just wrong, but you're being absolutely shitty too. get your life right. And if you're pissed that the public servants servants are standing up for themselves while others aren't getting the same deal, then your beef is with the unions and employers of those other goddamn workers now, isn't it? Boom. Truth bomb. Boom. That's a truth bomb. Don't be, don't be mad at the workers for getting themselves a better deal. I, I remember years ago there was a, a, um, uh, a paramedic in New York City who uh, was getting paid... I think I'll say at the time it was $15 an hour when the average minimum wage in the United States of America, in particular the state of New York, New York City, was seven and a quarter. And in, uh, McDonald's uh, employees wanted to unionize and they had the f- uh, 15er fight. So they wanted $15 an hour. And people would go, why can a burger flipper get the same as this fella over here who's a paramedic saving lives? And the fellow who was a paramedic saving lives said, why would I be mad at somebody who's improving their lot in I cheer them on. I want them to get paid a living wage. I'm not against that. You know who's against that? Wealthy people who don't want to pay them. And then they pit us against each other. No. And support them. Here's an example. Can you identify a federal employee who makes $40,000 per year that is not a contracted out job to somebody probably is struggling to feed for their family? This is the problem with you people. You actually don't recognize your own hypocrisy when it's slapping you in the face. For your information, $40,000 a year equals $3,333 per month. My wife and I don't even earn three k combined a month with two children receiving Canada Child Tax Benefit on the 20th and Quebec Family Allowance on the 1st. Eliminate classes, eliminate the wealth class, give an equal amount of fucks. Mm-hmm. Well, scroll down. There's I don't the, make forty thousand dollars, so nobody else should. Can you man? Can yeah. you identify somebody who makes forty thousand? They all make so much more. Mm-hmm. Scroll down a bit. You see that comment from Jane Arthy? Oh, okay, sure, absolutely. Let's go there. Whoops. Of course, right? Of course. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's lost because Twitter doesn't uh, work the way it should, right? Because you press back, and of course, it won't go back. It goes somewhere else. <laughs> Anyway, that was the comment that I replied to, and I never saw any statement from her after that. I think she she screw uh, you, Lonnie. Down. Yeah, making a making a service that doesn't work. Uh, anyway, so yeah, now I probably some of these are real people. I would assume most of them aren't, given Skippy's bot game, but there you go. Somebody asks for a little more, and it's like, how dare you? There was another comment. Yeah, but if you pay people more, like, oh, how much is it going to cost more under the economy, and it's going to make everything less affordable for us. Okay, so if you don't pay the people that keep the lights on what they're worth, nobody ever does the counterfactual. Well, and, and you do realize <laughs> that they go, how much is, how much is it going to cost for a hamburger? Well, in, in Denmark, the average minimum wage is $26 an hour. I believe it's $26 an hour. It might be a little more, a little less, but it's in that neighborhood where the average McDonald's hamburger costs exactly 23 cents more than it does in the United States of America. Throw your argument out the window. It's greed. It's corporate greed. Case in point. 
Galen Weston crying about, we don't make enough money. He's a billionaire. And then uh, getting a 55% wage increase for a billionaire who is now opening, uh, what, 38 new stores and renovating uh, 300 or 600? I, I forget what the actual number was, but crying about, oh, we don't make enough money. You're a billionaire. Shut your pie hole. Um, and what seasoning should we use for the rich when we decide we're going to eat them? <laughs> Something bitter. <laughs> I do believe the day of reckoning is coming, and I mean that sincerely. Now, is it going to be an uprising with hey, uh, pitchforks and, and torches? No, no, it won't be that. But the day of reckoning is coming. How it's going to appear in the in the 21st century in 2023 or 2024, I don't know. But the, the day of reckoning is coming because they've been literally pissing on us for so long and we've had it. And you know who's going to, you know, who's going to do it. Ooh. It won't be generation X, which is what I am. And it won't be the millennials. It's going to be Gen Z because they've been pissed on since birth. Not to mention the fact that their whole lives have been one constant struggle between one tragic, one tragedy to the next. And yeah. That leads me to this little clip I'm going to, this little thing I'm going to put on the screen here in just a second. Um, and this, this is a, a paragraph written by a, a young girl in high school in the United States of America. And I apologize. I clipped, I clipped the image and I forgot to, to uh, pull up the name of the author. So uh, this is uh, unfortunately going to be uncredited in this sense, but this is what this young woman wrote, young woman, she's a young girl in, in, in high school. And I'm going to put this on the screen and I'll read it to you now. And it's about Shirley Jackson. A dystopian society is shown in Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. I'm going to pause on that for a second. You remember the short story, The Lottery? Most of us, many of us read it in school. I'll tell you about it after I read this. This is a society where people go into town to be stoned to death, providing they are chosen in The Lottery. It isn't fair. It isn't right. Mrs. Hutchinson screamed, and then they were upon her. The lottery, the people justify this by saying it's tradition, but they never think of what they are truly doing. It is only when they or their family member is chosen that they see how unfair it truly is. This reflects on our society. Everyday students walk into school, sit in their classes, talk to their friends, but in the backs of all of our minds, we never feel truly safe. Since the first grade, the class of 2023 has seen an act of gun violence in schools every year. Yet, we still come to school every day and pretend not to be afraid. We pretend that we don't get scared when someone pops a chip bag in the lunchroom. We pretend not to notice Officer South scanning large crowds of people. We, repent, we pretend that we're always at ease, but with the constant reminders that we see on the news, we never truly feel safe. It almost feels like the people in power don't want to protect children. They claim to be pro-life, but once that child is in school, they don't care if someone turns a place of learning to a shooting range. We have been raised knowing AR-15s are more important than the next generation of Americans because of a sentence written by men almost 300 years ago. It's tradition, quotation. This is an injustice to the people in the future of America. Now that young lady could have a very bright future. I say could because the school year is not over yet. And there's been how many shootings thus far? More than there are days in this year. Way more. So, you know, I, she could have a bright future if she lives long enough to have one. And somebody might go, Paul, you're being ridiculous. No, I'm not. This is how the children of the United States of America feel today. Because of gun violence. So marinate on that for a little bit, please. Yeah. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the words that young woman, that young lady, that young girl. She's, she's like 15 or 16. She's still a young girl. Not underage. She's a girl. That's another thing that troubles me. Oh, he was having sex with underage women. No, he was having sex with a girl. He was a rapist. He's a pedophile. That's the other thing. The term pedophile refers to somebody who is still considered a child. A teenager is a child. 
You're not an adult legally until you're 18. You're not a fully functioning adult till at least 25 because your frontal lobes are still growing. You don't have the ability to reason properly until after the age of 25, and then experience teaches you more. So we have a lot of problems in society today, more than I can even tackle in a lifetime. I could sit here for the rest of my life talking about it and not solve a damn thing. I can suggest things we can do. I can tell you how I think collectively we can make the world a better place, and I really do believe that we can. I know you're wired for optimism, and I do appreciate that because that helps me on dark days like today. Days when getting out of bed is a struggle, when sitting here speaking into a microphone is all that's keeping me from curled up in a ball in the fetal position weeping in bed, because that's where my headspace is right now. That's where my mental health is. So when I read things like this from a young girl, it breaks my heart. And we need to make the change. But guess what? If her generation lives long enough, and I say lives long enough because of what she just wrote, they're going to make the change because they're pissed off, they're fed up, and they will not put up with the status quo any longer. So guess what? Right-wing Republican evangelicals who think you can rule the roost, your day is coming. Your day is coming, and oh boy, you are going to pay the piper. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get another cup of tea. I'll be right back. All right. Whew. Okay, kids. Um, yeah. He's right. He's right. I got nothing to add. It's, well, I got nothing to add. I do have it. Because I keep on saying that this is about competing rights. And I just don't know when it comes to gun violence, when it is um, that people are going to realize you're, you're choosing between, I mean, they have it right up in the Declaration of Independence, I believe, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And uh, right now, 2A is getting away, getting right in the way of the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. At some point, they're going to have to decide which one matters more. And I don't understand why nobody's framing it that way yet. Because that's essentially what it is. Of the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, or the right to bear arms, which is the one that matters most to you, because you're going to have to pick one down the road. And nobody wants to seem to just have that very frank conversation. Mm. Um, Just getting back to a second, uh, to what we were saying about David Mosscrop. Um, sorry, I went on a bit of a, a tangent there. Yeah, that, that, no, that's okay. Um, this was my response. Okay. David knows what time it is. What's rule number one of life, kits and cubs all together now? Don't, Don't be a douche. Be a douche. Yeah. You can take a douche. Let's shower. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going to jump in la douche. Um, but yeah, it's like you should, you, there is no reason to be beating up on anybody. That makes 40,000. It's like, and yes, yes, there are plenty of public servants that make more than 40,000, which was the same thing when we were talking about the educational support workers. There are plenty of them that make more than 22 or 26. That's not the point. The point is not for them who pay plenty more. It's for the ones that don't. It's the, the old thing, the old saying, uh, rising tide lifts all boats. So let's lift the boats. Not rocket surgery. Really? Tell me about it. Um, now, we're with the CBC. Uh, something very interesting happened yesterday. You know when we were talking about government funded or privately funded and um well we were talking about some of the graphs uh mr grizzly if uh this was in the one of the graphs i was showing yesterday i don't believe i showed it on this show but i did show it on uh, dean's show when i was on it yesterday this Mm -hmm. is 2018 2019 it's the cbc's books and Mm -hmm. here is their advertising revenue which then becomes this block to which they add their subscriber fees and their financing and other income, which becomes this blog, mm-hmm. to which they add 
the financing. So from the federal government. Yes. So it is at the moment the CBC, when you do that math, is about sixty nine percent publicly financed. Well, it turns out that this is yeah. what PP and Sarah Fisher yeah. and Elon decided to do. Why isn't everything screwing up on me today? Holy crap. I don't know. All right. Well, again, I just don't. Uh, it's frustrating. We'll get over it. Okay, there we go. Let's try this. I'm going to have to like, okay. make it smaller because <laughs> this time. So right here. Mm -hmm. And then I think they change it maybe later to 69% government funded yeah. or something. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and P. Air had a thing about that. He says, see, everybody's happy now. Like, oh, for yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now. Dean goes, Elon messing around with CBC's government funded tag is actually kind of funny. No. And then, of course, a lot of people go, no, 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 no. But here it is the thing that I find really interesting because I keep on saying, right, he's very clever, but he's not very smart. Well, it certainly now establishes that there is a direct line of communication between them two and a pattern of perhaps even collusive behavior gives longer legs to the story, makes the monetary value of the in-kind donation skyrocket. He's narrow casting. He just can't help himself. He can't. He's narrow casting. Seriously, think about it. What type of person who may have thought Let's assume there are some people out there that are actually, well, okay, well, it is true. I don't see what anybody is getting upset about. And then they see the second part. Right? Mm -hmm. And then they see him saying the second part with, oh, well, yeah, everybody's happy. What kind of look is that? <sighs> When, what kind of look gonna, is that? Are we going to cite him for foreign interference in electioneering? No, 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 no. Let's come back. What kind of look is that? Childish. When you're like, okay, so it's not a hundred percent, right? And here's the thing, right? The everybody happy, right? There was the seventy, but then it's less than seventy. Yeah. Well, no, go ahead. Put this up. Their concern has been so here, right? They do all this, right? Canadian Baca said, blah, blah, blah. they put the annual report, 70% of its funding. Blah, blah. The CBC argues that it funds the other 30%, so it should not have the label. Okay. Just trying to be accurate. That's this is lining here. Would they be okay if we said 70%? 70. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Good point. Generosity is always the right move. 69% it is. So then they switched it. Mm hmm. Now you got some people every Elon's playing chess. No, he's not playing chess. He's just being a dick. And then of course Pierre. There. Yeah, there. Now everyone is happy. What a smug little prick. Exactly. That's the look. Who's gonna like that look other than people who already donate to PP? The first one is bad enough. Mm -hmm. Big sugar daddy Elon, can you please give me a leg up by changing this thing and drawing attention to this? I would really appreciate it. And then Elon does it. There's a bad look right off the bat. And then you come back. You got what you want. You got what you wanted. And then you do this with it. It's not, he uh, cannot you know, pivot. Pardon? Goodbye, CBC. The whole Twitter hashtag last night, goodbye, CBC, had me in stitches. The amount of people that seemed to suddenly think the CBC was going to dis disappear because they decided they're not going to use their Twitter account any longer. Like NPR like, did. I, like NPR did on the 12th when Twitter did the exact same thing to them. I, I scrolled through it last night and I was laughing uncontrollably. I'm like, wow, the level of ignorance in this world, the absolute 
a braggadocio approach to showing the world how stupid and ignorant they are. <laughs> Way to go. We did it. CBC's going to disappear. What? No, they're just not going to use Twitter anymore. Which, see, here's the beauty of it. New York Times said they're out. That. Uh, NPR is leaving. CBC is leaving. All media, with the exception of the extreme right-wing evangelical Christo-fascist media owned by uh, Chatham Asset Management, amongst others, and Sinclair broad, uh, Broadcasting in the United States, they'll stick around. But all legacy media, they'll slowly go away, move to another platform, continue to expand their existing digital platforms along with their print. And their audiences will follow them. It's, that's right. And then Twitter will become oh. true social 2.0, where it won't be yeah. fun for the people who are there just to bash people because there'll be nobody there but themselves to bash. Well, you know, and I've, I've, I opened a Mastodon account and I have a Discord account, but oh my God, they're so twisted and convoluted I know. and user-friendly. They're, they're such not. a royal pain in the ass. Right. The only reason I'm still on Twitter is because we have an audience there. Yep. And, and, uh, and if we can... And, Trying to get, every, as, as I don't know if you saw the interview on, on Do Did Will with Brittle Star. Well, he said, we used to be on this platform. We tried to bring everybody over to this new platform. He said, People just don't move. People don't move. So I got to stick with Twitter for the time being. If, I, if there was an alternative platform where we could get everybody to migrate to, I'd do it in a heartbeat. But there's, but there's people, nothing. Well, that's the thing, right? Because if we, if we say like we're leaving Twitter, everybody come and join us on Instagram or everybody just join us on, on the blog that we already have on Facebook. For those who don't already have a Facebook account and those who have lots of connections in their network on Twitter, I was like, yeah, it's not going to be until enough of their network leaves Twitter that they too will leave Twitter. Right? If there's still a reason mm -hmm. to be there, you can you know, put on the blinders and ignore the other stuff and say, you know, I'm just going to be here for my friends. There's a lot of people that use social media that way. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, we had that, we had a discussion group. Uh, I remember now this is old school back at Yahoo groups, Yahoo group list. I went mm -hmm. to Facebook came yeah, along and said, well, yeah, let's just, let's just, you know, establish this thing on Facebook. And we asked everybody to migrate about 10% of the people migrate and nobody, nobody else used it. People stopped using the group list and the whole group just fell apart. It was an active discussion yeah, group with about 300 people. We were all sharing ideas and tips and stuff. And it just went, psh, psh, because nobody wanted to migrate. It happens. And that's the issue, right? Yep. Uh, now, uh, if you have the, this one up here, uh, Mr. Grizzly, this is a, a good tweet. This is the one that, that sort of captures how I feel about it. Uh, Tim Abre, I don't know who he is. Um, but there's no bottom with Pierre Poliver. Sorry, there's no bottom with Pierre Poliev. This is wildly irresponsible, to put it mildly. He recklessly hacks away at the foundations of democracy. He is so craven that he doesn't care what's left of the institutions. He'll be happy as the king, as the king of a smoking pile of rubble. Mm -hmm. Pretty much it. Pretty much it. Burn it all down and I'll be king of whatever's left. And that's good enough for me. And that's good enough for the people I say I want to lead. It's not good. Not good at all. And, um, well, remember when I said yesterday that um, journalists were probably going to be getting together uh, because PP gave him all the motivation at this moment? Um, well, <clears throat> Mr. Grizzly, if you would. Mm. Dean posted, just spoke to a journalist friend. Journalists are going to dig into Pee-Pee's entire life after he, one, mocked their colleagues, and two, spent two years calling them all, all corrupt gatekeepers. Direct quote, I think Pierre knows what he did. Not what he did. Oh. Pierre knows yes, not what he, he did. Not what he did. Ooh, yes. Um, did I call it? Oh, yeah. Cool if they said it with a British accent. <laughs> it's the thing that people have to understand. Journalists are a very, very interesting breed of people. Actual journalists. They take great pride in their work because the only thing you have is your reputation. When you're a journalist, 
It's your byline. It's your name under the headline. Mm -hmm. That matters. And if you put out crap, then that gets associated with your name. Right? Journalists care about the integrity of their work. Yes, they do. It's their work. It's like, it's not rocket science. So if somebody Most comes in. Most people who do a job, even if it's a crappy job, still care about doing a job. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it, everybody takes a certain amount of pride in, in, in what they do. Everybody, exactly. whether you're flipping burgers, saving lives, speaking into a microphone like we do, everybody takes a certain amount of pride in that they want to do a good job no matter what they're doing. So if he thinks he can slag off journalists nonstop and get away with it, oh boy, not only does he have journalists coming for him, but now he's got anonymous that are looking ready to gun him down. So I'm here for it, man. Here we go. I'm here for his come up. Yep. Let's, let's put, put this up. Keith Bogue, who was on the show. I was CBC's Ottawa bureau chief for several years during liberal and conservative governments. Only once did the government try to affect our political coverage. That was when CPC PM Harper staff met with me and asked that a CBC reporter be reassigned. I said no. End of story. Christopher Waddell. I like the comment. Go read Mr. Christopher Waddell's, Mr. Grizzly. I was CBC TV Parliamentary Bureau Chief from late 1993 to mid-2001, including through the Quebec referendum, and at no point did anyone in the federal government try to affect our Ottawa coverage. They did go after Terry Molesky in Vancouver, though. Mm-hmm. Ali Alboim. When the Mulroney government objected to our Meech Lake coverage and tried to have me removed, CBC management rebuffed the pressure. I continued in the job for another three years. Journalists care about their work. Any journalist media outlet that would do that type of thing, as soon as the journalists got a whiff, Mm -hmm. the actual journalists would all leave and go somewhere else. Oh, yeah. 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 There are no stories. There have never been in my life stories of mass defections of journalists from CBC because of something editorial. It's, uh, what's in my life. uh, The only thing example I can think of, and it's not even editorial. The only example I can think of just happened and not editorial Mm -hmm. sexism in the workplace. Lee and Finley at the state and BBC. And again, not editorial, not editorial. Whole different kettle of fish there, and we're trying to yeah. we're trying to dig into that one. So, so how are you feeling? Um, let's bring in James. Shall we? I was we? hoping you would say that. Well, let's bring in our good buddy James. We've not seen in a bit. Good day, sir. Buddy, you <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, you sound good. How are you? My Camera looks good. Looking good. Mike looks good. You look Thanks. good. What's I, going I, on? I was holding the microphone. Yesterday, I was trying to do a blackballed uh, audio recording. And the arm, I didn't know how to get the arm from stop springing up. So instead of calling someone who knows what they're doing, I just stuffed a butter knife in it so that it wouldn't spring upwards. So that's so this whole thing could just go flying any second now <laughs> because of the spring load. Just, so just wait a minute. You got all this new stuff and you're still MacGyvering it? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> if I had some duct tape, I'd be in business, but I don't have any duct tape. How are you doing, red green when you need them? Seriously. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, there is a there is a there is an anchor. Um, the the Middle East bureau chief for the CBC in like the nineties uh, got in hot water because he was referring to Palestinian uh, militants as militants instead of terrorists. I forget which bureau chief that was, but that was the only editorial thing that I could think of for the last thirty years. Mm-hmm. Just to make it yeah. boring. <laughs> right. The CBC is boring. <laughs> no, I'm. <boring. laughs> <laughs> in, in that sense, in that yeah. sense, <laughs> how are you guys doing? You, you don't want to be the story when you're a journalist, or no. You I used to, to I used to think you wanted to be. That's why I did all these stupid stunts that made me the story. Like when I voted three times and when I ran for mayor. God, that was fun. That yeah. was fun though. 
<laughs> are you going to run for mayor? I mean, they've got 48, no. that's 49. There's always room for one more. No, I, I definitely <laughs> am not going to run for mayor. Um, but you know when Chris Guy is going to be debating because because you can see the plaque signal up in the sky. You yeah. know? It's like a bad signal, but for big deal. The plaques. <laughs> <laughs> Plaque man. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh, come on. Please. I mean, throw your name. I, I'd like to see you debate him. <laughs> I would love to. But we'll bring cameras. We'll I'm, do a live. I, I am absolutely, I'm absolutely not qualified to be mayor. I learned that. I, I learned that when I ran the first time. But you are qualified to debate Chris. <laughs> I think I'm I am. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. I think I am. I think I am. I have. I, I, I tried to moderate a debate with him once. Do you remember? It didn't go over very well. He, I just walked away. Yeah. <laughs> Literally yeah. just left. Yeah. <laughs> For good reason. <laughs> For good reason. <sighs> <laughs> Man, we haven't seen you in a while. You've been under the bed. Everything good? Um, I don't know how to answer that. Um, I have been uh, indisposed of. I've been. Uh, I've taken a mental health break. Um, good. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. I just. Uh, I just. I just got out of the hospital, and uh, you know, I got out yesterday, and uh, you know, it was a kind of a wake up call and everything, and. Um, I'll get into details uh, on another show. I'm um, going to figure out how to, if I even want to go there. Um, but yeah, I, uh, okay. you know, I, I, I reached a, uh, a point where, um, where I, I saw these familiar pieces of furniture and I realized, oh, I'm back in rock bottom. <laughs> I could still see my footprints from the last time I was there. So, uh, but, but, you know, I'm turning a page now, hopefully for the better. And, uh, you know, I ate all the Adderall, guys. Okay, I ate all of it, like all of it, you know. And uh, and and uh, you know, it's things uh, things kind of spiraled out of control for me. But now, um, you know, it does something to you when you when you spend five days in a in a in a mental ward. Um, a couple of things that 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 people should know, though, because I don't want this to be turned into a dark episode. Is that you know the people that were there, people that were in my position, there was a nuclear physicist, there was a lawyer. There was a social worker, yep. which is really interesting. Um, you know, we're all kind of uh, dancing around these uh, the knife's edge sometimes, and I think that um, you know, it, it's for some of us the bottom could fall out, and uh, and when that does, you know, you got to try to find a toehold on the way down and climb back up. So this is me trying to climb back up, coming just in time too, because I have Noam Chomsky on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> my first interview my first interview out of the gate okay take the straight jacket off him there's noam chomsky there, yeah. there you go there you go there's Good interesting luck. motivation it's yeah. like how did you get better well i mean noam chomsky was coming i had to do something right that's right well he's 94 so i don't know you know 94 years old and the guy's still doing his Holy thing right? like amazing you know, eh? wow and he's still I am so glad you, i'm so glad you chose you my friend pardon me i'm so glad you chose you thank you um yeah, I mean, I don't really. What does that mean? You challenge well, yourself. You, you you sought help when you needed it. That's choosing yourself first instead of instead of uh, taking the alternative. Oh, I didn't. I, oh, I I went in the back of a police car. <laughs> I did, oh, I don't know if I. It chose me, you know, and I. It chose you. Said, yeah. No. Um. The details you are ridiculous. The uh, yeah, and and by the way, there was no one else around me at the time like it was I, no one called the cops i called the cops on, on me yeah. you know so okay. i i, I was yourself. in a crisis situation and i chose uh i chose to call and and get some help and and you know i could have left um three days earlier but i took the doctor's advice and stayed and i'm glad i did you know we're glad you um, did too yeah try to try try to live an organic life from now on like organic meaning no pharmaceuticals you know like um mm. it's so funny the, the the one thing I will criticize the the our medical establishment for is that they they have doctors that um will will sort of rotate, and I don't know if they talk to each other if they look at the charts because the one doctor uh, I was like I don't think I want to take any more stimulants like ever, so whatever mm. this ADHD thing is I'll I'll try to deal with it through maybe you know exercise and caffeine, um but as far as uh, I got to plug in here in a second um as far as um. The other doctor goes, uh, the other doctor comes in. He's like, so do you want Vyvanse? <laughs> I'm like, I literally just told the other doctor I don't want any stimulants. But, you know, maybe 
Sure. Um, this is maybe this is a test. If it is, I don't yeah. want any stimulants, please. <laughs> so, um, I think that's just you know it's just that like self medicating is a weird thing. You know, like you have things going on in your life and you just you want to deal with it the best you can. And sometimes you just you know choose the wrong, as Dean would say, you choose the rough handle instead of the smooth one. Hmm. Right. And uh, I I just chose a bunch of rough handles for for a few days it, it's called uh i was i was put into a it, because i did all the medication that i did it, it's called uh i was in a state of psychosis they call it yeah. and so that's when you can't really tell what's real anymore yeah. and so um you it's almost like your dream world invades your, your your real world and you and you and and even looking back i'm just like i have a hard time believing what i believed at the time but mm-hmm. you know but that's over, um, you know, and I'm just going to try to stay on the. I was thinking about this this morning about how that whole knife's edge. I like to say that a lot. Oh, you're walking on the knife's edge. I think really what, what the state that the stage that a lot of people find themselves in is that their right foot is walking on one tight wire and the, the left foot is walking on another one. And, and the right foot is walking on a tight wire of confidence and the left foot is, is walking on a tight wire of humility. And mm. to try to amalgamate those two together so that you have a wider space to walk on, I guess that's where I'm at. Mm. That is you know? deep. That is like, if you were listening yeah. to that, you should write that down. That is, that is very, very, very well said. Well, it's true. That's, that's where I'm at. Yeah. It's, I, I kind of got into it. It, it, it is what it is. I, I did a, I did an AM, ASMR show last night, and I kind of got into where my headspace is right now, and um, you know I'm working on it, but it's one day at a time, and and, and uh, that's all you can do, one one foot in front of the other, and keep moving forward, right? You, you trying to maintain that that balance of of um, mental stability sometimes is very difficult, and yeah. when we need help. Thankfully, we are now, uh, society has, has helped to try and destigmatize mental health issues. And, and, you know, as evidenced by what you said, you know, a nuclear physicist, a lawyer, a social worker, these are all professional, well accomplished people who are struggling this, with the same thing that you and I struggle with. So it, it helps bring it into focus in the sense that no one is immune to this. This can happen to anyone at any time from any walk of life, no matter how much it looks like you've got your shit together. It, it, yeah. it, we're all on that knife's edge. Every one of us. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> it's funny because we were the cool kids. <laughs> 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 we, we would go to the common area, all us uh, professionals. I'm using that in quotes because I'm a fucking podcaster. But, um, you know, uh, we, we, we all kind of... But, and there were the caricatures there. There was a kid named Trevor who threw his underwear at the nurses literally every single morning. Um, so there were people that were, that sort of fit the stereotype. But, mm. you know, what was interesting that we were watching the news in the common room, it was the CBC news, and, um, and they were talking about mental health. And we're kind of sitting there looking at each other, kind of like, you know, swimming in the irony of listening to them talk about mental health. And we, we kind of came to the conclusion that it's not that we don't talk about mental health anymore. We just talk about talking about mental health. There's not really much action, mm-hmm. you very, know, like the negative stigma action. doesn't go away when you talk about talking about it. There has to be that next step. We have to, we have to, I think, stop doing like that whole bell. Let's talk. How about bell? Let's fucking do, do something, stuff, you know, like, right. yeah. let's do stuff. Yeah. And, but really, if you can't, you got to help yourself. Like, I mean, I, I, I tumbled down the rabbit hole and, and now I'm going to climb back up and I'm, I'm hoping that it'll, it'll, go better than it did the last time like but this was i've never experienced anything like this before you know this was this was brand new for me it 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 was a rude awakening with Mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes i should have been i should be dead you know i i ate um something like 1200 milligrams of adderall each day for three days in a row which is 65 times my dosage so you know or something like that uh i'm not very good at math but it's uh I, I did enough to kill a horse basically. And, um, the doctor told me that he's like, do you remember how you took it? I'm like, every once in a while, I would just take a handful. And he's like, well, you know what? You saved your life doing that. Cause if you took all that at once, you clearly be dead. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those situations where, uh, I got lucky, you know? Yeah. 
get you got your second chance, man. Yeah. So let's. Uh, well, let's for me, it's it. like my 18th chance. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know. So but, you're, uh, you're a double cat then. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you're two cats. Yeah. You're two cats in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my tail. <laughs> that's not, not, it's not tail. Let go of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, we're we want to come see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, see, we can still laugh, and I'm, I'm in a terrible state right now, and I can still laugh. I'm trying yeah. to explain that to people who don't get what, what mental health is, what depression is, what anxiety is. It's, it's like trying to explain rocket science to a squirrel. Yeah. It, you know, it, it really is, you, you got to try, I'm always trying to find a way to, to, to make it relatable to people so that they can, you know, here's what I'm experiencing here, how I feel. And it's sometimes I struggle with having the words to define what I'm going through. Oftentimes I can find the words after I've gone through it and said, this is what I was feeling. This is how I was feeling. And people will look at me like, well, why don't you just be happy? I don't get that comment very often anymore. Almost never, actually. But I used to get that before. Or I'd get somebody who would be mad at me. But you have a good life. You should I have to happy. plug in. Excuse yeah, me no one problem. second. No problem. And, and you're right. You, this is what Rianne is saying right here. Rianne and Saucy C, which gallows humor is essential to survival yeah. for the anxious and depressed. Yep. Yeah. So true. So true. So true. And you're right. Here's a comment from uh, Corinne on Twitch. Um, it's a different language. You're right, Corinne. Um, we, we struggle and try and find the words sometimes. And, and when your mind is spinning radically out of control, madly off in all directions, as the saying goes, trying to find the words to express to everybody around you what you're feeling and how you're feeling when you're in the middle of it is next to impossible. And oftentimes after I've come out the other side, I'm able to express what I went through and, and this is how I felt. And and I can use the words like I did earlier. Like right now, I would rather be curled up in a ball in my bed, weeping uncontrollably. But what I'm doing right here at this moment is helping me. This is therapeutic to me because I'm talking about something other than what is occupying 95% of my brain space right now. And, and, and getting my head out of that space and being able to talk about anything other than that, even while I'm actually kind of talking about it right now, helps yeah. Because it helps to get, give me a clear head, mm -hmm. you know, dwelling on it nonstop when you're alone at home, like I am, can be really detrimental, which is why I'm going to be reaching out to as many people as I can today to just talk about damn near anything else, you know, and then you pile on all the other things that life has to, to, to hand out to you. Like today I've taken a personal day, a personal slash sick day. I get three of them a year, either personal or sick, you know, to take your, take your pick. And uh, I've not used any of them since I've been employed by this, uh, by this company. And I've not, you know, I, I get three weeks vacation a year. I only took two weeks last year. I've got a week that I'm trying to carry over and they're like, you can't carry it over. And I'm like, but there's nobody to cover for me. So how do I take time off? Well, last week I could have technically taken off because my contract, which was renewed, but the paperwork hadn't gone through. So I don't have access to the building. I don't have access to my accounts. I can't literally, I can't do my job without having an escort. And even then I can only do 30% of my job. So I could have taken last week off had I known in advance and a week off last week would have made a huge difference in my life because as everybody knows, I'm working nonstop around the clock and that can take its toll on you. So today is a personal day. I'm going to take care of little things and take care of me and drink some tea and reach out to a couple of different people here, there, and everywhere and just have a chat and catch up and, and get my mind off of what's occupying it 90% of the time right now. And that's where I'm sitting at the moment. Maybe you should shave that beard too, you know? It's coming soon. It's coming soon. <laughs> but we want to do a charity event around it. Do stages. So can, like, do stages. Like, yeah, have, exactly. Yeah, like make sure you have a half beard at one point where you can go like this and then talk to yourself by going like that and it's just clean on one side and shaved on the other. Like, well, that's the, probably the idea a weekend. Is, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be a weekend. The, the idea is I want to do it over the course of five days. And what I want to do, ideally, is I'll put up, okay, this style, A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, that's five, right? <laughs> 
biggest file per day. <laughs> yeah. Me brain. Counting is not my. Uh, uh, you can't real pretty one, one, day. <laughs> and one plus the idea is to have a book. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's a different style, and it's like, pick which style you want me to wear that day. I'll wear that for that day, and that will cost $100, and that money will go directly to Cornerstone Housing for Women. The, the idea is to raise, I'd like to say, let's raise 1000 I'll, I'll be happy if we raise 100 to be honest. But yeah, I, I'd also... We'll do. I'll wear the gigantic twirled up mustache for five days straight. The Salvador Dali for five hundred dollars. Nice. Yeah, I'll do the Salvador Dali, and I can right now. It's like really long. <laughs> I'll, do that for five train trucks. <laughs> I'll do it for five days straight if we can raise five hundred dollars for for um, Cornerstone Housing for Women. And now, and and when we do fundraising, we do it differently than many other people will. We're not going to see a penny of it. The money's not going to ever enter our hands. Um, We'll have you donate directly to the charity and then just send us a confirmation email from the charity that they send back. I've done this in the past yeah. and I think it's the best way to do it because we don't want to have the money anywhere near us. If we can avoid that, we will. We'd like to have it just because go directly to the charity. Is that why? I'm not saying I would, but <laughs> temptation would. would certainly be there. <laughs> temptations there yeah. well, it's like you know i did the work i should you know 50 bucks is, you know <laughs> but i know what my temptations are so let's do it this way give the money directly to the charity i'll look like a an idiot for a week wearing a salvador dali mustache to help others you already look, look like methuselah you know. so it's okay don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> if you put on a good hat you could be Karl marx you know Ever since if I put on sunglasses, I'll look like the average redneck uh, idiot that sits that, in their truck going, that, that Justin Trudeau, I'll tell you what. Yeah, my neighbors, every last every, one of them. You know? every, every time I hear Methuselah, my kid, I can't help but think of that, that song, Chicago. Since the days of old Methuselah, they all love the old bamboozalum. <laughs> I don't even know that song, and it's funny. Is that a show tune or something? From, is that from Chicago? The music from Chicago. Yes. Mm. <laughs> That's the only time I've ever heard the word Methuselah. It never comes up. It was the saying when I was when you young. I think Chicago, my mom. I was thinking the band. My mom used to the say, "Band Chicago is what I thought you meant." My mom used to say something like, "You know, like something about like, oh, that's as old as Methuselah." I don't remember what the saying is, but she used to say that. Also, does it look like we are promoting the personification of a Douglas Connor light rye sandwich right now because of the complexion? Of, <laughs> of, like, and not only that, but we're the two ends of the bun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wonder bread wonder bread dark meat yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> throw some sauce on this yeah. you got a hot chicken what i see on bill mar bill mar had this spoof these spoof ads the other night um and he was saying uh it was like new ads for like woke ads for for companies and it was like wonder bread we apologize for our whiteness <laughs> <laughs> but we're so soft and squishy. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, do, do they have one for Peter Beaver, the other brown meat? Mayonnaise? <laughs> no, I hate mayonnaise. Oh my god, the, the food! Other, other oh, the food in the mental ward, guys. If there's any inspiration that you need to not fall off the knife's edge into rock bottom, it is the fucking food. Jesus Christ. Motivation to get better. <laughs> and you can't even order any, you can't order food. Like, you can't, you can't, you can't order takeout unless you know someone that will drop it off. So obviously I'm in Pembroke. I don't know anyone there. And, uh, and so I was kept on bribing the nurses. I'm like, I'll buy you dinner. I'll buy everyone dinner. <laughs> I just need a pizza. Just get me a pizza. <laughs> just get me something. They're like, I'm sorry, James, for the last time. No. And so we, it, I called it, the, I'm like, well, the soggy meat company isn't, a, isn't doing it for us. <laughs> Just one slice of Hawaiian, please. Yeah. No, I'm Italian. <laughs> Hawaiian sacrilege. <laughs> no, you can see the poor guy go. Just, just, I just need a pineapple. <laughs> I, I just want a Sicilian pizza. Just that's all I want. Yeah. If I cannot fold the slice, it's not pizza. Don't give me that ah. pizza pie shit. That Chicago shit. I don't, I don't like that stuff. The pizza we had at uh, at Neat Cafe was quite good, quite tasty. Yeah, it was. It was. I barely it was remember. Very that. good. That seems like five months ago. It does seem like a long time ago, and it's only like three weeks ago. I think it was a good night. It was a good show. It was a good time. 
Did I? Did we ever air anything? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I sent you the audio for the Jordan interview, and I, I sent you. I think I sent you a link to the video, but something happened. I don't know what happened to the video. We recorded that great interview with Classified. The video looks great. There, I can't find the audio. There's no audio. Like I don't know what the hell oh, happened no. because we clearly heard everything when we did it. And I was looking at the monitors. Yeah, okay, it's recording. I think it's gone. Oh, so it doesn't exist anymore. Oh no! Well, I have the video, but I never had the audio. Should and we it was, dub it? I think That'd it be hilarious. Screen. Should we dub it like they yeah, do we, with the old yeah. like martial arts films? <laughs> hey, you over there, pick that up. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I don't understand. Daniel, son, want to fight? <laughs> exactly. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is that racist? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> no, I don't think that making fun of bad movie making. <laughs> you have to do it in a in, a, in an Anglo-Saxon. Daniel's son. It doesn't work, though. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. Welcome to downtown Abbey. <laughs> you gotta work on that. <laughs> <a little> <laughs> oh. No, thanks, guys, for having me on, by the way. I, I was worried I was worried about my... You know, it turns out my sound was probably fine the whole time, but I couldn't see the levels when I'm in the green room. That green thing doesn't go, and I didn't realize that. So I'm sitting right. here rebooting yeah, three know. times, and I'm like, ah... We'll just give it a go. So you've got the new Rode X mic. Correct. That's a very good microphone, by the way. And did, do you have this? Because there is a specific set of software with that as well eh, that you can adjust. I have not even. I just plugged it. Okay. In. I'll find it. I'll find it and I'll send you the link. Um, my game and it gives you a high? whole bunch of control. Of it. No, no, no. It sounds good. Okay. I'll, I'll send you the software so that you can um, play with it a little bit and you can adjust it. And it, uh, you can, there's tweaks and, and things you can do to make it sound more like you have a full hardware console oh, okay it's software that will make it sound like you have an outboard okay. uh, console and i'm not used to seeing uh my my face and head in in h in in like 4k or whatever this is and uh i gotta yeah. tell you it's a little unsettling i'm like i <laughs> i i could hide my blemishes before with pixels right <laughs> now i'm like that's a little too clear for me you know i'm gonna start wearing like foundation so that no one sees the fucking ridiculous laugh lines and Mm. bags under my eyes <laughs> well this this software that i'm going to send you will give you the ability to have see this console i have right here it's called the roadcaster pro okay um and the software i will send you will will be able to duplicate a lot of what this can do not okay. not 100 percent, but very very close so. okay i don't know what that does but i trust i trust your judgment okay all right anyway. all right um <laughs> can i just say douglas just gave us a private chat that said we're drifting way off topic everybody we need to get back to business so douglas it's take it away <laughs> you can kick me out anytime you want guys honestly i no, totally no, 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 sandbag no, no. your show here no 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 it's not at all it's good. not at all not at all that's this is not sandbag this is you know we just had a comment from a kid here it was like uh miss uh miss Sedeka. I'm actually really humbled listening to you fellows share your vulnerabilities. I'm so glad we are in a time where men feel comfortable to talk about their feelings. You think I feel comfortable? <laughs> well, kidding. whether you're comfortable or not, you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm doing it. That's right. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. I shouldn't joke. You know, yeah, do yeah. it anyway. Yeah. Uh, did you just like shrink, Mr. Grizzly? Yeah, he just went to. No, my camera decided it, it wanted to move. Your seat didn't go down? It, Okay, uh -huh. I was wondering if it was oh, your seat. So the camera. Now, now he looks like one of the dwarfs in Lord of the Rings. No, go back. <laughs> <That's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Now you, hey, go, guys. Little high, now no, you go a little higher. The Mines <laughs> of Amoria. Oompa Loompa. Oompa Loompa. I'm going to make myself really orange here. Hang on. Fair enough. I'll play with <laughs> this. It's weird because I'm 5'6". This is really weird. How does it feel to be the tall kid in the class, James? <laughs> uh, great. It feels like grade seven. <laughs> the last time I was the tall kid in the class. Grade three for me. Oh, really? Yes. Are you See, short too? I, I'm five six and a half. Oh, on a oh my god, we're like the same height exactly. Yes. Oh wow. I thought you were this like grizzly bear. I thought you were like six two lumberjacky. No, I'm a little otter. I'm fun sized. Okay. Good job. Like an oompa loompa. <laughs> You, yeah, you do look like Technicolor was just invented. <laughs> oh, sheesh, that's horrible. That's it's the fun with cameras. Fun with cameras. <laughs> so you guys want to hear something funny? Um, yes, my first, my first act, act. My first, the first thing I did when I got out um, was I, uh, 
I went and bought an umbrella from the, from the uh, Pembroke Hospital gift shop. And then I walked two kilometers to the Pembroke Mall. I bought this camera. I bought uh, these earbuds, which I hate because my ears are too small and they keep on popping out. And then I went, I was like, oh, I need mm. good food. So the good food was me going to the food court and buying like two containers full of Asian wok <laughs> and A&W hamburgers because I was so tired of soggy meat food. And um, I'll be living off of it for the next, I don't know how many days. Um, and you know what? It still looks good to me. It doesn't look like shit to me, even though it looks like shit to everybody else. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, no, it feels that like cuisine. Good. It feels like I should be saying tra la 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 when I eat it with my chopsticks because, as you can see, I haven't done my dishes since I've been away. So. <laughs> Asian walk, everybody. I should be there. I, this should be my first sponsor. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> oh, what did I have to say? <laughs> And so I went home, but first I walked to Asian Walk. That's right. That's right. There's a, there's a bunch of, remember Yan Can Cook? Walk, walk with Yan? Yes. Yan, Yan yeah. Cook. Walk, yes, walk yes, yes, yes. No, I liked him. His, his garlic Steven game Yan. was second to none. He would just smash that garlic with the flat side of the knife and roll it out. Like just one move. And the whole thing would pop out and the skin would yeah. be gone. It was great. Yeah. Not like Pasquale, though. He's still my favorite. Uh, the opera singing Italian chef that yeah, really had that. no regard for cleanliness. Yep. <laughs> just sticking <laughs> his hands in pork and just going like this and chopping vegetables. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Here's all reminding me of Julia Food. Julia Child, look at that presentation. It's a sign that people's fingers have been all over your food. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. Now you watch the shows and they're like using like little tweezers and stuff yeah. to like put the little things of microgreens on. <laughs> it's, like, it's like we know you do it with your hands. We just know. go to Asian Walk, everybody. <laughs> the tweezers are just for TV. We know. <laughs> Asian Walk. The food looks like what it will eventually become. And then a flush. <laughs> But it's good. It's still yummy. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a walk. Oh, that, uh, no, no, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> right. We were going to sign on, but uh, not sure. <laughs> oh. Way to get and lose a sponsor in 45 seconds there. <laughs> uh, so funny. I'm just going to check the weather here for a second. Oh, quickly. Okay. Okay. Is this the a weather order. break? Okay. We have a weather cam, yes. That's the weather cam. There's the weather cam. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Looks, looks it's like a, my, my brain. There's some weather. You see that flag flying right what there? Oh, that? yes. What is that motorized vehicle that just went by on the right? It looked like an old... What was that? It looked like a, I don't know. Looked like a T... What's that called? The T car? The, the, the first... Model T. Model T. If, if, on the playback, you, you can, can see, see the flag of the... Uh, that's the uh, ambassador of the uh, uh, Ukraine. That, uh, Ukrainian ambassador lives across the street from me. Oh, hey, wow. since uh, since this is a little bit of a political show, James, hmm. since we have you here, um, what do you I, think of a leader of an opposition that does not want to get a security clearance so that he can see national intelligence documentation? Um, I haven't followed the news in a week, but if what you're saying is that Pierre Polyev does not want as a sitting leader of an opposite of the opposition security he really clearance. does not want has he stated why he says it's because yes, it will not allow him to comment on national security which is a lie he will not be able to comment on the intelligence he saw but he was basically saying without saying it i just want to maintain my ability to say whatever about what the intelligence may be and have he, the fig leaf of deniability that i can't be sued for having lying because i've never seen it I think it's because he doesn't want to be seen agreeing with the government. Mm. You know, if Justin Trudeau makes a decision, a national security decision that he knows is correct, he doesn't want to be on national television or in the house saying, I agree with Justin Trudeau. That's all it is. Mm. You know, because and apparently you, that's more important problem? than national unity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He doesn't, it's funny how some people like leaders like him, Trump, um, to a certain extent, Doug Ford, although not as bad. Um, they, they seem to have this weird idea that it's more important to, um, when you're in opposition, to oppose 100% of the time rather than uh, prove to people that you're uh, willing to, to agree with the government 
on items that you think are important enough to agree upon. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't think they understand that there's nobody, uh, I mean, he, is he worried about losing the, uh, the ragtag wack wackos to Max Bernier? Or, or, or is he just not confident in his mm -hmm. ability to um, gain anybody um, from, the, from the middle? Um, and he might have a point because it's hard to throw roses to both those demographics. Right? Yeah. So he's chosen, he's chosen the ragtag wackos. And um, we'll see how well that plays out for him. I don't know. You know, it, it, there, there's something to be said for Lee. Remember when um, the pandemic first started? And he might not have been, he might have been disingenuous, but there was a few moments where Doug Ford um, not only deferred to the federal government, but said yep. that he agreed with Justin Trudeau. Mm -hmm. And I remember those moments and he, he might've been disingenuous, but you know what? Those moments are the moments that people remember. Those are the moments that probably got him reelected. Probably. Well, that in a 33% voter turnout, but. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was the right thing to do though. It was the right thing to do. Yeah. Right. Whereas Skippy said, well, we don't believe in those big government spending programs. We're conservatives. Yeah. We don't believe in If I can address one of, one of the comments that uh, Jim made in, in, in the chat here about uh, him not having security clearance. He has security clearance in order to set foot in the building. Yeah, there are levels. He just, yeah, he just doesn't have the, the, the required clearance he needs to look at specific documents and that's the thing a lot of people have gone well how come he doesn't have security clearance no he, he does otherwise he wouldn't be in the building but you need a different level of clearance to look at spe specific documents and specific briefings and for and those documents it's that. the highest probably probably one of the highest yeah, levels it's, it's cosmic it's cosmic is trudeau allowed there, to make him is trudeau allowed i don't know what the answer is to this but is he allowed to be like okay fine then you don't get it even if you change your mind is he allowed to do that i don't believe so. Okay. I don't believe so because I, that's not actually up to the prime minister. Yep. There is that's that would be RCMP uh, that would take care of that. So the prime minister has really no say in that. Okay. Security is a separate matter altogether. Because it'd be funny. Well, and, it'd be interesting if they to, if he was if if it was like well we we find it very suspicious that he doesn't want security clearance. So now he's a security issue. <laughs> You know? That's what we've well, been saying. Yeah. We were yeah, wondering because we've we've heard nobody else say it. That was the very very first thing that popped to mind. So what better way to say the hiding. entire world that was looking to exert influence well, it's because and it's saying you don't want to get cleared? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. one of the rumors is, and again, just a rumor, is that his wife's father, his step uh, father in law, sorry, uh, was mobbed up in Venezuela. <laughs> And extorted a lot of money and left the country as well. Did you did you know that Pierre's um, residence that he tags as his primary residence um, is in his uh, his his riding in, in Carlton Place and oh, oh, and his still to this day his residence is his mom's house. So maybe that's why he's so fixated on thirty five year olds living in their parents' basement. But I, you know, who am I to say? He also yeah, he's um, still lists his official residence as his parents' house. He also was yeah. a business. Well, now he's at Stornaway. He, he's, yeah. he was business yeah. partners with one of the Plymouth Brethren members too. Uh, yeah. he, they owned the same yeah. real estate. I think they still do. I, I could be wrong about that. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so he's yeah. got Plymouth Brethren ties as well. And uh, you know, I haven't so, dug he, dug in that rabbit hole in a while, but I might start doing that again with David Wallace and then seeing you know what's going on. What and, and what's uh, sorry, the other? other yeah, go ahead. Well, the other speculation is that he doesn't want to undergo it because he already knows he can't pass it. Can't pass what? He wouldn't awesome. pass it, the security clearance. Oh. Oh. Why not? He would have enhanced for sure. Um, he, he, I don't know if he has top secret. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But he would have enhanced at, at a minimum just to set foot in the building. Um but usually enhanced uh, clearance means you, you require an escort at all times. I have secret level two and was, uh, they had set me up for top secret. As it turns out, I just found out I didn't get the top secret because they said, oh no, you're supposed to have an interview. And I go, well, they never called me. They go, yeah, because the project changed. So we weren't going to assign you to that project. So it was never a requirement. Uh, little so known, I don't have to. Little secret. known fact, Bill, Bill Clinton also required an escort at all times. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm back, baby. <laughs> yes. This thing on? This on? <laughs> <laughs> One so joke, stupid. Slade. Boom. <laughs> yeah, <crazy. laughs> yeah, top secret is a long process to get to get the clearance. They go back. They go back to your childhood. Literally, go back to your childhood. Yeah. So in the second grade, we heard you had a fight on the playground and said said, you know, I'm going to kill you, you know, as a child, and said, I'm going to kill you for that because somebody won more marbles in the game or something. They literally go back that far. Wow. And for cosmic clearance, I think they have you pee in a bottle, bend over. And, I will never. You know, get and they look at the close family members. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. that's why I'm wondering. They interview your. Yeah. Well, it, I had to fill out so many documents; it was ridiculous. I just didn't go through the final interview because the project changed, and I I wasn't attached to it. So. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, guys, I'm I'm gonna, out of the I'm, angle of not agreeing with uh, Justin on the national security thing. That's an guys, I'm going to split it's now because my, my kids uh, are over oh. at their mom's house and they're about to get on a bus in 13 minutes and I'm going to say good morning to them. So I'm just going to... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe I'll come back if you guys are still here. Uh, I don't know how long you guys are going for. I didn't realize you went this long. Um, but I will uh, I, I will. I will just sort of step into the green room and if you guys are still there in like 10 minutes, you're there. Is that okay? All right. Cool. All, right. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. All right, kids. Uh, different kind of show this morning. We didn't expect that we would be going there, but hey. That we always start every show asking of how Mr. Grizzly's mental health is. So we will always make time. We'll always make time for that. Well, and we'll always make time for friends. Well, and, and you know, what was the, th it's Paul, our, our, our mandate is politics and general culture. And I think mental health is part of the general culture because it affects everybody in culture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Everybody in the population is affected by it somehow or some way. Yeah. Well, that's the everyone is affected by it. Yeah. Well, that's the wonderful thing about this type of format too, right? It's like, you just don't, you know, something comes up, you know what, let's go with it. Mm, yeah. We're not, we have no restrictions or restraints. Uh, the only restrictions or restraints we have is when we say, no, we're not talking about that and we can end the subject altogether. Yeah. We have the control. We have the ability to control that. Yeah. But, but it was something that we talk about, talked about with our interview with Charles was um, the thing we love about this medium is how wide open it is. We don't, we can we can veer into any lane we wish, and we have instant uh, interactivity with with everybody viewing who, who wants to join the chat. Now there there are people who watch on on Twitter uh, who don't necessarily um, get the chat, uh, so they don't. Sometimes they don't quite understand what we're talking about. So uh, I apologize to the folks who might be viewing on any one of the Twitter platforms. Mm -hmm. If you want, we have our, we have a YouTube channel, uh, True North Eagle Beaver Media. And you can check us out on YouTube. And if you want, you can subscribe as well. See what I just did? There? Yeah, very smooth. Very, very smooth. Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> now, pointing it out, pointing it out is not smooth, but, you know, I could have laugh at myself. Very polite, elegant clapping. Oh, thank you, Mr. D. <laughs> um, Mr. Grizzly, it's interesting that uh, when we were talking about uh, Pierre in Venezuela, uh, this one came up uh, yesterday, which I... This part I don't really know much, and I saw that. Tell us about your wife and her parents' role in Venezuela, PP. Is that why you refuse to undergo a security clearance? And then, of course, you know, just singing, right? Somebody's about to find out that Transparent sees a two-way street. <laughs> and, um, well, the kids say that they like it when I sing. <laughs> well, I was a little inspired. Oh, you wrote a song, did you? Yeah, just just a, just a couple. But so. journalists and the CBC have had about enough of PP. Pee -pee. Someone is about to find out that transparency is a two-way street. <laughs> that's uh, that's we got to write a musical. We got to write a musical. <sighs> yeah, we'll write a musical, and what are we going to call it? PP. Pee pee and the bean. Don't pee pee on me. <laughs> well, remember freebie and the bean. Pee pee and the bean. I don't know. I just <laughs> and I started calling him P -E air. P e e a i r. P -E air. He -E really doesn't like that. He really doesn't like that. Yeah. He hates pee pee, but E air is a good one too because you're actually saying his name. You're just saying it with a very English accent and or anglicized accent. I should say. English accent would be pia pia. Pia, Pia, would you like to come to dinner this evening, Pia? P, 
Pierre. P E E A I R. Get it trending, folks. Let's hash it. Pierre, would you like to come to Diner? Siswear. <laughs> okay, Mr. Reaver and Kitlin M. Okay, Mr. Beaver and Randy Rainbow. I <laughs> would die. Mm. I would die. I love me some Randy Rainbow. Like this is hilarious. I, I, oh my God. If it, he, he would, it, you know what? I always said that I know I would make it when I get cast in a video as like the, the video dancing person that just like stands there. <laughs> In a TikTok. Do you remember the like Wolfman the from like Hilarious House of Frankenstein? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, it is. It's like it's like that's what I know a little bit made it when I get cast in a rap video as just like the background. Look, look, look at me dancing. <laughs> that's my showbiz aspiration. <laughs> that's how, that's how a movie or to be that's cast in a got discovered. To come back for the sequel. Yeah, J Lo was a, a background dancer on In Living Color. And she was a background dancer in an EPMD video. Yeah, like she was a, a fly girl, fly, fly girl on In Living Color. That's right. That's right. I think she did pretty good with that. Eh? <laughs> You'll never yeah, make I... a career out of dancing. Oops. Oops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just ask Cheetah Rivera. Hey, come on, man. I see, you don't you really you don't know Cheetah I mean, Rivera. I know okay. who Cheetah Rivera. Is. No, I don't. I okay. Heard legendary uh, legs for days. Uh, but she, she did a kiss of the Spider Woman. I think she was well into her sixties or seventies, and she was. I saw her at the National Honor Center, and she's dancing all over the place in these little things and high kicking and whatnot. Still in like late sixties, she was incredible. I've never seen anything like it. Cut from the Tina Turner cloth. Probably, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she's. I, I was, I was like, how are you doing all of that? And it's not like she's a, like, you know, sometimes you see dancers and they have like these big, thick, solid legs. So these like nice thin. It's like how are these not snapping into? <laughs> what well, you are doing, <laughs> especially in the heels and all. She doesn't, yeah. So yeah, dancers. Respect. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, this white guy who knows how to hold up the wall. That's all I know how to do. Yeah. Not you know my head. Hold up the wall. Hold up the wall. I was that guy. I was that, like in high school. This wall. Is like, <laughs> yeah, that was the extent of my dancing. <laughs> I had friends that are threading the needle and doing the running man. I'm like, I'm not going to fucking try to do that shit. <laughs> you guys dance. Cool. Yeah. I'll drop the beats. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What was the old saying about Fred Astaire was the greatest dancer in the world? And they said, what about Ginger Rogers? She did all of it backwards and in heels. Mm -hmm. That's right. But he but got Fred all Astaire, the credit. Fred Astaire was his knees, though. He had yeah. the smoothest knees. Fosse it was ridiculous. Bob Fosse, yeah. 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 The Michael Jackson uh, inspiration. He got all his moves from Fosse. Moonwalk, yeah, oh yeah. everything. He's fucking... And Fosse it's amazing is watching... I love with dance. Really? Oh, yeah. All those sharp little movements and the, the little bit of the sexuality in it without being yeah. vulgar. I hear Billy Jean Jessica every Rover. time I think of Fosse. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Because that, that song, that, that song, like yeah. Michael Jackson's moves in that video... Is like a Fosse routine from front to back. Like it's bookended. The whole thing is Fosse. Mm -hmm. You know, they had that I didn't thing even that know was... he existed until I was like thirty. Yeah, they had that meme that was going around for a while there. That in the, uh, I think it was from the movie Sweet Charity when Shirley MacLaine like comes in, she sits at the table and she goes, "There's so many people, so many people. I'd like I'm the least famous person here, or something like that." Yeah. And they got that where they're doing that that weird. Bop, 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 yeah. bop. Like and everybody was trying to recreate it, yeah. like this. That's like well, that was the whole thing, right? That was the whole Fosse thing, right? Those like yeah. little movements and the and it was just ah, oh, break oh, dancing love, probably love stemmed from Fosse too, really. Oh, like probably a lot, has of a lot of elements. All the popping and locking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I would. Do you guys so, yeah. always go for this long in the morning? I didn't. Really no, we that. don't actually. Oh. He's, uh, M Mondays and Fridays we usually get to go a little uh, longer, about like an hour and a half or so. Uh, but uh, the other days we normally get only about forty-five minutes. But uh, oh. he, he's taken a personal day working from home, so we have more time. So nice. we decided to use it. Nice. Yeah. <sighs> so uh, you got anything? Uh, you got Noam, Ch no Noam Chomsky coming up. You got any other people lined up on your show? Oh, I'm going to do Casual Friday this Friday. Yeah, you're obviously welcome. As my co-host, you're obviously welcome, welcome to be there. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to interview anyone between now and then. I really got to figure out if I want a background 
or if I want people to look at my kitchen. Like, I don't even know, like, like my house is just, you know, my kitchen's a thousand miles long, you know, and like my house wow. is really big and I don't know how to make that into like an effective background. My background, if I put it up, it looks so shitty now because it's just been through like hell and back. And uh, it, you can see the whole thing now. So it looks like this and mm. it's all dilapidated and shit. <laughs> so I think that my, 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 as Dean calls it, James's CBC background from 1974. Right? And he's right. Um, I, I'm going to have to figure out another, like, I don't know. I, you know what I want? Like a, like a cool looking dressing wall or something like that. You know, like, so it's something that's dark. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. So uh, I have to figure background stuff out. So uh, I don't think I want to um, do an interview until I figure that out. Casual Friday. I can do like this cause it's casual. Yeah, right. And then for Chomsky, I don't know. Like I, I keep on thinking that I want to do something like, you know, worthy of Earth Day, Chomsky on Earth Day. Like we're talking about the environment for the entire time that he's on. And so, I, you know, but I'm not good at gimmicks. I'm not a visual art person at all. Like I don't, you know, so if you have any pointers that you want to give me off air or something like that, that you, that you think that I should put for a background, I'm all ears because otherwise it's just going to be this. You know? Do you have a deck outside you can set up on? I do. Just be outside nature? Well, that's an interesting point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But you only have to, you have to worry about if it gets windy, right? Oh. I might pick that up and it won't well, sound How good. about I just don't do it if it's windy? You know? There you go. <laughs> and just, just a consideration is all. What if the wind picks what up? What if you're windy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always windy. <laughs> That's why you got to choose. And everyone it. knows it's windy. <laughs> <laughs> and windy has me. <laughs> Everybody at <hit> Wendy's. <laughs> I uh, I was considering uh, uh, putting a giant monitor behind me. And I'm like, well, I have a 55 oh, have there, but I was thinking about upgrading to a 65. And I'm like, who's kidding who? I can't afford that shit right now. I'm out of coffee because I don't have the money to buy it. So what am I thinking about buying a 65-inch TV? <laughs> but I could move. I have, I have a 50 in the bedroom that's like 12 years old. And I could put that behind me and just put a graphic on it or something. But... I'd have to put it on a, a wheeling stand and I, the stand is more than a new television. So <laughs> that's not working out either. You can't just put it somewhere and stationary just like just for the show. Yeah, it would have to be propped up on something though. That's the thing. And I'd need to oh. come up with anyway. I'll figure something out. You know, right. not in a rush. Um, I've got uh, something for you, James, that you might not have heard of okay. <laughs> since I, you, if it happened in the last week, I probably took a vacation. Heard of it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, have you heard anything over the past week about uh, U.S. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas? No, but what did his wife do? <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems that uh, Justice Clarence Thomas, even though he's been on the Supreme Court for 31 years or so, uh, and apparently because he's an, and he seems to be an expert of the, of the law, apparently was not aware of even though apparently he asked a lot of people and they told him that he absolutely did not have to do that, that he has had for the last 20 years or so, or maybe even more, 30 uh, every year he's been on the bench, had to disclose gifts that he received that costs more than $415 US. Uh -huh. But it seems that he has a sugar daddy, oh, no, no, sorry, a sugar Nazi named Harlan Crow, who has been taking him and the wife on very, very expensive vacations, including a $500,000 Nine Island hopping trip in Indonesia that cost about with servants and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it seems that Clarence Thomas has ridden often on his personal jet, sometimes without Harlan Crow on it. Mm -hmm. wow, that's a uh, it seems that he has spent time at the Bohemian Club at many of his properties, and it seems that there is more. It seems that in 2003, <laughs> Harlan Crow bought some properties in Savannah, Georgia that belonged to Clarence Thomas. Now, Crow says he wanted to preserve the historical nature because it was the childhood home of a former Supreme Court justice. He also funded a documentary on his life, by the way. Uh, one of the houses is the one in which Clarence Thomas grew up and in which his mother still resided at the time and still wow. resides now, even though Harlan Crow bought it and completely renovated it. And by law, you're supposed to report sales of real estate of over $1,000. And Clarence Thomas did not report that either. Is he going to resign? Yeah. Pardon? Is he going to resign, you think? Uh, there's pressure now. Uh, it also seems that uh, he 
gave a funding to an organization that his wife, Jenny Thomas, works for. And it seems that with that funding, she was able to draw a salary. Oh. Can you say paying from something for someone and having one degree of separation, children? Who's the guy? I knew you could. Arlen Crow. Arlen Crow. Who's that? Uh, well, I, he's a big, 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 rich, I guess, real estate, maybe? Okay. I'm not quite exactly sure. But uh, very, 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 very uh, generous donor and supporter of the GOP. And also a um, white man from the South who apparently needs to have a signed copy of Mein Kampf in his home, two paintings of Hitler and Im- Lindens embossed with swastikas to, according to Brent Shapiro, remind himself of how much he hates Nazis. Remind mm. himself how much he hates Clarence Thomas, too, since he's black. Yeah, <laughs> what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> now, of course, Clarence Thomas is saying, well, Supreme Court justices are allowed to have friends. Who but I don't know. Them? Do you have lots of friends that treat you to $415 plus dinners and $500 million yacht trips? A 140-foot yacht, by the way, with servants and all that, and private estates in the Adirondacks and private jet. And Only one. I have one friend. You and let your mom live in it. And I only have one friend like that. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> George? <laughs> No, no. Not George? I have a friend who, um, you know, uh, Marge's high school prom date, Artie Ziff? Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah. So Artie Ziff is named after Rob and Dirk, hence R.D. Ziff. Uh, Rob and Dirk Ziff, who are the uh, um, the people who, um, what do you call those? The 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 people that inherit shit. What are they called? Uh, the uh, the kids Harris? that inherit stuff? Anyways, they were the the people. Uh, they were the kids of uh, Ziff Davis, publishing owner. And when that mm. when their father died, they inherited a billion something each. And my friends, like one of my good friends' sister, married Dirk Ziff. And um, we went to their compound in uh, Florida, like literally like two compounds away from Mar-a-Lago. And um, and I've never been around more empty, shallow, disgusting people in my entire life. Like to the point where they were like. Excuse me. Um, when we eat soup, we do it like this. And they were like teaching me how to eat soup. And I'm like literally picking up the bowl and be like, thanks. <laughs> Just sit back. <laughs> like, fuck off. <laughs> like, seriously. I didn't last very long there. <laughs> but yeah, so, they, they, so he has taken me on many trips uh, i rode in his private plane and everything like well this is my buddy like who, who was able yeah. to get that from his sister but anyways um but other than him no but he wasn't a nazi <laughs> i'll tell you that much <laughs> <laughs> mr grizzly if you put it up so yeah when you were asked about uh clarence uh, thomas's wife uh Ginny, well here it is Billionaire Harlan Crow also funds Ginny Thomas's $120,000 annual salary, which he earns by being a religious nut. Billionaire Charge Koch funds the Heritage Foundation, which gives Ginny $680,000, as some Clarence also failed to report along with his annual lavish vacations. I guess you could say Clarence Thomas is a skinhead. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to make of this anymore. <sighs> Political has learned, for instance, that the initial $500,000 contribution came from Dallas real estate investor Harlan Crow, a major GOP donor who held an event for Liberty Central at his home a few months after the group launched. He also once gave Justice Thomas a $19,000 Frederick Douglass Bible as a gift and donated $450,000 to build a new wing named for Thomas on the Savannah, Georgia library that Clarence Thomas visited frequently in his youth. Oh, yes. And Clarence Thomas also apparently in that documentary said that uh, he comes from regular stock and he prefers Walmart parking lots than the beaches as he's riding on a 140 foot. Yeah. Most rich people are cheap, though. So he could be oh, telling uh, the truth yeah. there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like Barry Sherman still drove like a K car, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He was worth what, six billion when he was murdered? There's there's it's somewhere Allegedly. between three and ten. Yeah. It's mm. depending so on. So it seems that uh, as you mentioned, uh it looks like certain representatives are looking at impeachment proceedings as a real possibility, and there have been calls for the Department of Justice to start opening an investigation. Well that'll be interesting for does. the makeup of the Supreme Court if that happens, because Biden's in yes. office now. And, you know, so maybe, uh, maybe they're, 
there's a positive spin to this, I guess. Isn't it weird how the, the Supreme Court is supposed to be a body that is beyond politics? And mm-hmm. ironically, it has the lowest ethical standards and ethical laws and rules and whatnot of any government yeah. body organization in the entire United States. Because I guess they're Supreme Court justices, so we're just supposed to trust them. You may find that the, that that at the end of the day, once you look at all of, once you really take a, a deep dive into the rules governing the Supreme Court, that maybe he didn't violate any rules. Because it reminds me of the Senate scandal with, right. uh, with Mike Duffy. Right. He didn't violate any rules at all. Because there were no rules to violate. Basically, right? <laughs> and, and so the, this could be one of those things. Like it, it's easy for a soundbite to be made by a newscaster saying, oh, he violated this and that. But when you look but- under the hood of these rules, they don't have any teeth often and and they don't really yeah. count as rules they, they count some of them are not suggestions what do they call it um you know they, they, they there's like a permission fees remember. pardon me permission fees well oh, yeah. it'll cost me one thousand dollars in fines if i do this okay yeah that's that's right yeah anything that like because you're still obeying the rule oh i paid that or or sometimes there's just like things that are that are permissible that are sort of um you know that, that are exceptions to the rules if it, because these rules have no teeth anyways, and then you provide an exception to the rule and all of a sudden you get to ride in private planes, right? Like mm-hmm. it's, you know. Yeah. Now in the United States, things are a little interest cause, interesting because a lot of these laws sort of popped up post Watergate. So there are laws, I'm not sure how much teeth there is, but it says, how can you be a Supreme Court justice for 31 years? There's a law in the book since the day of Watergate that says you need to report gifts of over $415. You receive $500,000 $500, luxury trips and you're a Supreme Court justice and you don't know you need to report that. And you say that you've asked great legal minds and friends and they also assured you that you don't need to report that. And you took that as the advice on whether or not to report or not, rather than, I don't know, because you're Supreme Court justice, opening up a freaking book and looking it up yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. He wouldn't be he wouldn't be a Supreme Court justice if he was nominated today and he had the same thing happening with Anita no. Hill that that he had to deal with when oh, yeah. he first became a uh, Supreme Court justice. Well, we can say that, but Brett Kavanaugh right. became a Supreme Court justice, and but a black but but now, honestly, Biden, I think it matters yeah, that a black woman was yes. accusing him of of doing things yes. that I think that yes. uh, at the time they were very prejudicial against Anita Hill. And I don't, and I think those prejudices Mm -hmm. would be not as apparent these days. And I don't think he'd be, he'd make it. Here's a question. He would. If Anita Hill had been white, would Sir Clarence Thomas be a Supreme Court justice? He would not. He would not. Absolutely. Because it was a black woman. Not even that. She doesn't matter. So we we can still. He wouldn't even be nominated. Yeah. Because they would would have known about this stuff and he wouldn't have been nominated. Yeah. She was yeah. put through the ringer. Yeah, right. Her and Monica Lewinsky yeah. were probably the most two bullied women in politics in the nineties, right? Or in, in the eighties and nineties. I can't remember no, what year he no was. No argument nominated. whatsoever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Yep. Completely agree yep. with you. Oh, I got I got something for you, gentlemen. You want to see this? Uh, another reason to blame Justin Trudeau for all the ills of the world. <sighs> Canada's inflation rate decelerated to four point three percent in March, down from five point two percent the previous Wow, month. that's and huge. Economist expectations. Damn Trudeau. <laughs> Just inflation. Exactly. And and, and, and mortgage rates in, in, uh, are starting to go down a little bit as well. Mm. I yeah, want the housing market America. to crash. I really do. I want it well, to fucking crash. It's outrageous. <laughs> I have a friend who's a mortgage specialist, and she was quite thankful the other day when, when she saw that dip. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there might be a little relief. So, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, mine for some reason is apparently variable mortgages have gone down to like about like six tenths of a percent. I've not received anything from my mortgage company saying that mine's going on. So, uh, first national hello. They'll just, they'll just get on that the please? Screen rolling for as long as they can until you say something. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oversight on our part. We'll correct it now. Yeah. Where's the money back? Oh, oh no. I'm sorry. My problem is I don't know what variable mortgage means. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Fluctuating like, interest rate means your mortgage goes up or down, so your monthly payment can increase or decrease. Usually increase, very, very rarely, if ever, decrease. I rent. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I have a 4,000 square foot house that I rent for $1,000 a month. That I, I paid more than that for my rent in a 650 right. square foot apartment. That's right. You could fit also, five. You could fit five of your babies in my in my one house, and um, well, it, I'm just saying. But I live the in a forest. Can, yeah, well, I was going to say you live in a forest, whereas I I'm a 15 minute walk. I live in a 15 minute city. Yeah, <gasps> racist. 
or something. Right. <laughs> I don't have to show a card when I leave the zone. Yeah, the only rent. time I've ever had to do that was during the occupation when they had booted them all out and they kept zones for the area around until they made sure it was safe again. And then they immediately disbanded that once the EA was dropped. Yeah. Fucking fifty. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't have good ideas these days because if you have a good I mean I don't even know if the 15 minute city is a good idea I don't know much about it all I know is that the reaction to it was so hilarious that it was probably oh. a decent idea Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean like well, the idea behind it is is everything was in the 15 minute walk uh, doctors, office, grocery stores entertainment you know, everything you need in your life Well, that's What's it. Wrong there's wrong nothing with wrong with that like it's not like they were saying you couldn't go to zone 2 to get your dentist yeah. work, right it's not like it's not like schools where you have school zones right it's, it, it wouldn't be the same thing it's like it's not. i'm sorry you're shopping at the metro over here no, no, when three blocks away is your small. metro you're gonna get a fine yeah. like it wasn't like that right like not at all not at all yeah. well everything is either within a 15 minute walk or a 15 minute train ride away oh a train so, ride where they pack you on trains is that what you're saying paul <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, oh, oh, good. Good. You know oh. what be, be a re- it's fun to Are pretend that you're a reaction list of the people they put on those trains no they don't care <laughs> they as long as they get their paintings and their gold oh, God. right yeah like i don't you know if you pretend that you're a reactionary for a day it is hilarious <laughs> it's so fun because you can just take anything and just twist it into something nefarious you don't oh, take yeah, anything. Go ahead. Say yeah. anything. I'll, well, I'll turn it into something nefarious. Child, uh, free child care. Free child care. No, how free about child? free communist? post-secondary education? Oh, a communist. And, communist. and you're trying to indoctrinate our children into the world of communism. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. Better airbags in the cars. Pardon me? Better airbags in the cars. <laughs> Sissies. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day, we didn't even have seat belts, and it was good enough for us. I no, you're not flying through a windshield, windshield during your accident. You're not a man. You're the not good a, Lord will protect man. me. That's right. <laughs> I got Jesus as my passenger. <laughs> I had a, a buddy that I used to work with who did go through the windshield. Um, uh, he's a patriot. Uh, <laughs> well, well, he... Uh, Hero. No, he's going to say something bad now. I apologize in advance. So it's okay. It's okay. He went off. He was off work for two months. He was in the hospital and then he went back to work. And he went back to work too early as far as I'm concerned. Um, but he finally did get his settlement and it was a healthy one, which it should have been because the driver was shit-faced. Oh, did I mention Also that a were, patriot. Did I mention that they were coming home from a, a company Christmas party? Oops. Oops. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, so the, the he got a... He got a settlement from the guy driving the car and the guy's, why are you suing me? He goes, I'm not suing anybody. My insurance company is, is going after your insurance company. And then he went after the insurance company for the company who held the, um, the, the, the party because they didn't, you know, if you hold a company party of any type and alcohol is served, whether, whether or not you provide the alcohol, say you had it in a bar somewhere that was, and people had drinks, it is your responsibility as an employer to make sure that they get home safely, whether it's, taxi chits or uber or you have a shuttle bus that drops everybody off that wasn't the case these guys were driving out in the country the driver drunk out of his mind went off the road in the winter time wrapped the car around a telephone pole my buddy went through the windshield he got up trying to figure out what was going on then he realized the car was starting to go up in flames so he pulled the driver out uh he had a broken jaw uh he two broken uh, or, or two slip discs in his back i think he had a broken Jesus. arm and a broken leg like he was in the hospital for months and he showed me photos of it and his face was swollen up because he he went head first through the windshield the only reason he didn't get cut up was because he had on a toque a really thick toque and he he was kind of asleep at the time like this so when he went flying through his head was down so he didn't even know until he woke up in the, in the snow Wow. He was lucky to live through it, but he is on, he's on a cocktail of medication for the rest of his life for, for the, he's like in pain nonstop. He can eat a handful of Oxycontin and it doesn't, as he says, it barely takes the edge off. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've heard of situations where the people that leave those parties drunk can actually sue the company themselves. For oh yeah. Letting them yeah. leave drunk. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, that, that did happen. Everybody got sued everywhere. And in the end, the driver, uh, he got a settlement from the company. Uh, the, the passenger got a settlement from the driver and the company. And, and it was just the insurance companies that paid it all out. It wasn't, never came out of anybody's pocket, but I'm sure their rates went up. Yeah. Mm. 
but he's lucky to be alive and a good guy, real solid guy. He helped me out when I was, uh, I was going through a really rough patch a few years ago and, uh, he called me up and says, how's it going? I'm like, not good, not good. He goes, what's on, what's going on? And he, and I told him the story. He goes, here's $300. I'm like, oh, well, I, I can't repay that. He goes, don't repay it ever. I don't want it back. I want you to pay it forward. If somebody else ever needs a, a, a hand up at a time, give them a helping hand. I'm like, done. I, I can use never it. Can you send me, send me $300, Paul. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I, I can't afford coffee right now. <laughs> I would if I could. You know what's funny? Financially, I've never been better. Oh, <laughs> Everything else you. is really? going badly. But financially, I'm fine. You know? Oh. Yeah. I'm stretched yeah. real thin right now. Let's put it that way. It's going to change soon. I've got a raise coming and I got a bonus coming and I did did some extra work. So, yeah, I've got, I got you know, I'll be fine. I'll be fine soon. It's just it, always darkest before the dawn, right? That's right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um got a little bit uh more news if you uh, you want to tackle yeah. the subject okay sure. um the prime minister's chief of staff katie telford recently testified uh mm. at uh, the parliamentary committee uh about uh, the whole election interference influence thing by the communist party of the people's republic of china and during that uh testimony is when we found out that uh mr uh, Podiev was refusing uh, to get the security clearance. Now, there was an instant before where MP Mark Holland had said that Pollard had refused one, uh, but turns out he had never actually been offered one and he corrected that, uh, oh. that misstatement in the House. But here's the question. Um, how can you even be offered that type of security briefing if you don't want to be cleared first? Yeah, that's, you wouldn't that's even get an offer. Weird. You'd get an offer to be cleared, but not an offer for the briefing. If you're not clear to see it, yeah. right? Someone so probably just like, spoke, right? Like in so, that so yeah, it's just bespoke, yeah. right? But that's what. But when when you're talking about words matter and how people like take that little that little kernel of truth and then they run with it, as mm-hmm. ah, he wasn't even offered it. See, he lied. You can't trust everything they say. Okay, well, well wait a minute. Maybe the reason why he wasn't he didn't refuse one. Sorry, he wasn't offered because he refused the screening. Wow. Oh. Okay. Um, so. And then we have a bit of a situation where it's almost like, um, you know, when they say the dog caught the car and then they don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, they spent all this time, they spent about three weeks trying to get her to testify and the liberals were filibustering it until she just said, you know what, I'll just testify. She volunteered. And then they said, okay, so they sent her in to, well, no, 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 no. They didn't send her. You were demanding her. And she said, yes, she would come. Yes. So you asked for her. She came. And then when you watched that, the questions they asked were horrible. They were not pointed. They were not precise. They were not seeking to look at getting any information. Most of the conservative questions were basically speeches with talking points. They wanted her. And they did not prepare her. They were looking for... Um future ads uh, they were they were looking to see if she would dither and and so they could have future ads i tried to watch that from the mental ward of the pembroke hospital but trevor kept on throwing crayons at the screen so we couldn't, we couldn't actually watch it. <laughs> i'm not even joking trevor! Not a joke. <laughs> I, he, well he, i could understand why you throw crayons at the screen those questions were all horrible. they were all written in crayons maybe trevor was onto something maybe he was really trying to communicate something poignant at that moment yes they wrote their questions in crayons <laughs> that's right. telling you Stop throwing them. But they really did. I <laughs> did like anyone ask her anything? Crayon best. I, I, I really don't know. Because, I mean, there was... How, how can she all, answer There anyways? was almost no news at all from yeah. it. You would think that it would have been this big explosive day considering how much noise they made about getting it. And it just like went by... Bloop, bloop. So she I could went, barely say anything. That's the reason she could barely say anything. They'd ask her questions. She goes, "I can't answer that. I can't yeah. answer that." It's like, and I mean, those it were was, the questions. They kept on asking her those questions. So stunt questions. That's, that so is the, the that's the ad. Her, him asking that to which they could not get an answer. That's the ad. So again, you that's say the ad. You care that, about that's national what's, security. Yeah. That's what they're going to use for the ad. They're going to they're going to be talking about uh, liberals being secretive, liberals being dictators, liberals being authoritarian. And they're gonna they're gonna say that their evidence is her saying, I, I can't answer that question. I can't answer that question. I can't answer that question. It's just gonna be a repeat of that. Um and, and that'll be the next uh, series of ads. That was it, yeah. Me. So 
basically, how much have they fundraised off, off this so far? We haven't gotten a number, but I'm sure it's a lot. Yeah. I'm sure that now they had uh, NDP MP Rachel Blaney, who was on the committee, had asked Terrell Telford, quote, so I'm just wondering if there would be a willingness to say, you're right, we should have just done this in the first place, which was going to the public inquiry right off the bat. And Telford said, I believe what the bigger what is a bigger problem in terms of things festering at the moment is the partisanship and hyperbole that has been brought to this so often. And it's why the special rapporteur was necessary, because somebody had to be able to figure out what those other appropriate next steps might be. Yeah. Um, so they asked her about uh, the classified information specifically, which is information their leader refuses to get cleared to be able to see, and information that has been seen by two conservative MPs, because there are two conservative MPs on the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, but none of us in the public are privy to what they did with that information or how they communicated it to their caucus or their leader. Are they allowed to? Of course. There's got to be some, you can't comment saying that I saw this intelligence, but you should be able to say, you know, I saw this and there's nothing here, or we should be worried about these types of things. But isn't it odd that, that that we're in Why have two MPs on if they can't relay that everything they've seen is at least all clear? Well, that's the weird part, right? Because that, because now there are, so there's some backbencher MP. I don't know who the MPs are, but maybe they're uh, shadow ministers. I have no idea. But like um, Alex but, Ruff and um, uh, somebody Morrison. So it sounds like a backbencher, maybe yep. one shadow minister or something. But but they are now privy to a higher level of classified information than their own opposition leader is, than their exactly. own leader is. Right. That is that that is a very strange glitch in our system. I don't know how you. Uh, first of all, I don't know how you can't conclude that Polyev doesn't know. I'm positive that they told him the conservatives are like that. You know, I, I, I don't see any situation where, where Polyev is like, as the leader is like, don't tell me, I don't have the right to know. There's no way there's a dark corner somewhere in the house of Commons or in, in, in Queens park or, where, or sorry at the, in Ottawa where, where, where he knows that, that would be my guess. Like they're, they're not, I don't know if you guys know this, but they're not very um, ethical. <laughs> Conservative. No. <laughs> but got some breaking news here, guys. Breaking news. Okay. I'm just going to throw this on the screen. Oh, yes, because it's nine. Galen Weston will be replaced as president and CEO of Loblaws. Yeah. He'll be replaced starting next year. The company announced the news in a press release on Tuesday morning. He will be replaced by Perbank, who is currently CEO of one of Denmark's largest retailers. While he will no longer be president and CEO, Weston will remain executive chairman of the company. So nothing will change. <laughs> nothing will change. Not, window dressing not really happy with the liberals on that one you know i, I mean I, yeah. I enjoyed i enjoyed watching uh who was it that was uh asking jagmeet jagmeet yeah jagmeet uh, disappoints me over and over again but not not yep. that moment he, he was amazing um you know how do you have record profits when all of us are struggling well you know profits are defined by no no sir <laughs> how do you have record profits and and he was right yeah and uh, Trudeau and, that's and Ga- it in a nutshell. Yeah, Trudeau and Galen Weston are friends, right? Aren't they? Yeah, I don't. So, know. I have no idea. But, uh, it, it's interesting what you say, though. That that he knows because here here's my thing, right? Is if you have every every party has MPs on that committee, that ends a cop committee. So there has to be a mechanism for them to relay back to their party something about what they say. Now they probably can't make again comment about the specifics of the intelligence but they should be able to say whether things are all bored areas where there are things that are lacking things where we should be concerned here's an angle that we might without giving them the intelligence information there has to be some way to relay it back, back to the party because there's no point of having an all parliamentary committee all parliamentary committee from all parties if you can't relay some information back there's probably heavy 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 restrictions on what you can't but Pierre I guarantee knows what something what it- yeah, the, what, now, whatever was said in committee, know Polyev knows everything. He probably whatever knows everything because everything. these people can't keep secrets and they lie and cheat as, as, as their DNA. And I personally still believe that probably some of those two members are probably some of the sources of some of the leaks because okay. they never say, like this, members of the, like former CSIS employees, but it's sort of like people in the national security community. Yeah. Well, that could be anyone. Yeah. That's pretty broad. Um, so... But no media is nobody media has asked the Conservative Party yet. It says, well, you have two MPs on that committee. Now, what have you been told about what they have heard? Because right now you have a leader of the opposition that is making comments on national security without knowing the intelligence. So he's making comments knowing nothing. 
based on zero knowledge personally because he's not supposed to have it. But is he making, um, I'm wondering if, uh, first of all, shocker, the media is not doing their job. I'm completely shocked about that. Um, second, um, if Polyev is, uh, Polyev often gives it, he, he's, he suffers from hubris. He, he, he thinks he's smarter than everybody else in the room. So there, um, we, you might be able to read into his questions. Like that question was way too well worded for you not to know what's happening inside that committee. You know, like there, there's, but the media is not going to ask those questions. They're just not going to. And, and the, what the media that would, you know, doesn't get a seat at the table in order to be able to ask those questions. I've been trying yeah. to get Polyev on my show for like a year and a half and I keep getting his assistant, like, you know, kind of giving me the runaround, you know, cause they know that I've had people on the show like before that are, are, are in politics and national politics. Uh, I've interviewed not for my show, but I've interviewed Trudeau twice. They, they know who I am, but they won't, they won't ever let Polyev on my show. Even hmm. though I like let people like Max Bernier on my show and Christine Anderson on my show, like you know, like I, I, it's interesting because um, they don't they don't want conservatives are more afraid of hard questions than the liberals are, yep. you know, and the liberals are in power. Yep. So what does that tell you? Mm -hmm. Yep. You know? now, so we got a situation at the moment that in committee, while there are cameras and mic cameras rolling and microphones recording, conservatives are very interested to know what the intelligence contains despite them being fully aware that in that setting, the information cannot be given, right? Because Katie Telford said how many times, I can't unfortunately speak to the specifics of what the prime minister has or has not been briefed on in all of this. So the prime minister has been briefed. because We can't tell him what the specifics they've been briefed on. So the prime minister has the security clearance, <laughs> clearly, because he's been briefed. We know that. So... They want to know all the information when they're a community in committee, which they can't have because it can't be said publicly. But then when they are offered an opportunity to actually get the information in private, well, then suddenly they get stricken with a collective case of lack of curiosity. Can I ask you guys a question just to play devil's advocate? Please. What was the, cause I, cause, uh, my rabbit hole started a couple of weeks before I, I left, but I, I don't remember how the whole, what was his name? Han Dong. Is that his name? Yep. I, I don't remember how that was, res if it was ever resolved. Like there was the, there was whispers about a mistranslation, you know, yep. there was stuff like that. Yes. So, so really do we know? Vanished. So we don't know. So, so it's no, entirely possible. And it just, whew, just it's entirely vanished. possible that he was compromised, right? Like, like that is a, one possibility that he it's was compromised by a foreign government. Mm. Yep. Okay. We have so, nothing one way or another. So to us. Sorry. Know. We have nothing one way or another to let us know other than his own statement. Now, it seems like his life has been completely ruined. Um, but, I mean, if you are if you are an agent, well, that's what you would expect an agent to say. So we don't know. Interesting. But we don't yeah. know. All we know is that um, there was information that was not consistent because its intelligence is not evidence, right? It needs to be verified. And sometimes there's deliberately faulty intelligence that is put in to throw people off track or to see if somebody ratted something out that they weren't supposed to say if they're trustworthy. So all that is in there. Um, but the problem but with that is that he said, has a, if, if, if he's completely innocent and you don't come out and say he's completely innocent and here's why, you're, you're sort of um, extending the scandal or the potential of the scandal to last a lot longer. It is interesting to me that they haven't mm. cleared him publicly because the party it, it, has said, the party has said it. They've stood by the him and he's has. suing, but no, nobody from the intelligence community or whatnot has come up and said anything. And I think part of the reason is it was because it's it's there's a defamation case uh, going to tr well. I'm sure it will go to trial. I have no doubt. But we won't be able to know uh, any of those unless, uh, no details either. No, exactly. Anything that involves secrecy, we'll never know about. But if he wasn't but funded it, by China, very, then there is no secrecy. What, what are they protecting? Uh, that's, that's I don't know. How, how don't they know. investigated that to find out? Maybe. That he doesn't? I mean, yeah. Sam, guys, Sam Cooper is is a solid reporter. Like, he, he is he is not a shitty reporter by any means. I'm not saying that I know anything about this particular situation. I talked to him, I don't know, three weeks ago, a month ago. Whenever the story broke, I talked to him a few days after. He wouldn't really tell me much, but, um, you know, but but his reporting was so solid for his book, Willful Blindness. Uh, which is a bestseller. It's a it's a it's a book about the Chinese tentacles into Canadian politics, into casinos and money laundering and drug dealing and yep. all that kind of stuff. It would be I would be very surprised to find out that he just willy nilly 
through a story together like this unless there was some sort of political bias on the behalf of a CSIS agent or something that wanted to plant a story that wasn't true and use Sam Cooper as almost like a useful idiot or something because Sam Cooper's not the type of person. I think that may very well be the case. Yeah, it could be. I think that's the case. Because well, when they when they talked about this translation, the word could either mean support or not support, and it's you know it's all tonalities in 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 Mandarin, it, right? And it, it wasn't support or not support. But, it was it was about the release of the two Michaels, right? right. And it was the the difference between immediately and delay. Should right. Be released immediately and, and the word sounds the same. Should delay it's the release. The it's the pronunciation. Like for example, I'll say something now, and I'm going to say it incorrectly, but in in Mandarin. Ma 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 means grandmother is beating the old dead horse, but it's all in the intonation on how you say the word. It's the same word, but it's it's how you say I'm it. I'm trying to laugh, but I, I thought you were. No, I, I thought you were having a stroke. <laughs> I wasn't sure what was happening there for a second. <laughs> well, one, one one of the things my buddy told me, he says that the language is not as complex as you would think. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, in many ways, and, and he he's Chinese. Let me. He's Chinese Canadian. Okay, he he immigrated here from Hong Kong when he was very young, uh, and he speaks with a, a a pretty heavy accent. We worked together for a long time. Good guy. And he said to me, the language is very guttural. And I go, what do you mean? He says, well, you might look at me and say, Paul, could you go over to the coffee table over there and and get that candle, bring it over here, and light it for me. Whereas he says, if you did a word for word translation into because uh, he spoke Cantonese dialect, he would say in Cant- Cantonese it would be you table candle here light. I'm like really he goes yeah all the other subtleties that you have in the english language do not exist in the chinese language which i didn't know so you know tmyk yeah i knew I intonation know. is big so, in, in, in chinese dialects like you know it's, it's, so i get that but we don't has anyone done a story about how because i when when remember when obama just before he left office um he expelled all of these russian diplomats um mm-hmm. from the from the embassy and um it, it came out that and this is not this wasn't surprising to a lot of people who follow politics that um host governments fucking spy on embassies they they spy on right. they, they, they they tap the phone lines they know what's going on right yeah. so but we don't talk about it right like it's really interesting I, I watched probably not to my probably to my detriment but when i was in the hospital i spent an inordinate amount of time watching declassified which is the spy program talking about all these different spy stories and stuff and it's really, really neat how we, um, how we can like get all kind of like uppity about um, the potential for for a foreign entity to be spying on us, and and if you're, especially if you're in the United States or something, when the United States is like spying on everybody, and it's so funny how we clutch our pearls, mm-hmm. like oh my god, but but at the same time we need to realize that the only reason that that phone call was even known to happen. Is because we fucking tap the lines at the Chinese embassy. That's what we do. That's what fucking governments do. Yeah. And so maybe we need to talk about that. Maybe that needs to be the subject because, you know, and no one's ever going to talk about it. That matters. But if we uh, talk about it, you know, like, I don't know. There, there seems to be a weird hypocrisy that, that governments kind of undertake and, and sort of thrust upon themselves uh, when we, you know, they don't want to confirm or deny and everything. But like, has any reporter been like, um, how was the, how, how how do we have access to this phone call? Oh oh, I can't tell you. Oh well, I can tell you. <laughs> you tap the phones, <laughs> right? It's not like you know? there's seventy five thousand options here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty much one option. That looks racist. Theos, oh, that's not theos, a Chinese. Theos, oh my God, Pierre Poilievre. I, thought he was I know, but we read that comment too. Like this, whoever this artist is, keeps on making them look like uh, like Xi Jinping. Jinping. Wow, with the hair. Yeah, that was awesome. that's Theo Medakis. That, that was Theo. That is one. that intentional? <laughs> I would have to say. Wow. That's so funny. Put it back up. I would have to say. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> he looks like the North Korean leader. He, he looks yeah. like little Kim. <laughs> he totally does. Little yeah. Kim. <laughs> well, I, I love that he's wearing I love that he's wearing short pants. <laughs> oh my god, little Kim. No, we don't call those shorts. We call those short pants, That's right? right? Oh my god. He used to Little be the Kim, guy in short pants. The one we don't like. Yeah. He used to be. That's the one who, that that's who, know kitschy, kitschy guy, yeah. That's right. That, that's who, uh, that's who uh, um, what's his face? The uh, the senator from the Senate scandal there. That, um, Mike, Mike Duffy. Duff, Duff, as I call him. Um, I still talk to him, by the way. Yeah. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. He won't go on my show. He's like, my lawyer, 
my lawyer won't let me do your show, James. And I'm like, come on, Duff. Like, you just fucking, when do you listen to lawyers? Since when does that happen? Right? Like, but he, uh, but it's funny because when he was talking about the kids in short pants uh, during the sentence scandal, he really kind of meant Pierre probably have. <laughs> Pierre yeah, Pellier was yeah. the original short pants kid because he was a 23 year old secretary to the prime minister. You know, that was his first job as an MP when he got elected. Mm -hmm. Fucking crazy. Yeah. My buddy worked for him at the time. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what my buddy did, but he worked for, for Skippy at that time when he first got in. Yeah. You need, he was part of the staff. You, you need to send me that cartoon. Cause I think I am going to do the little Kim hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a side-by-side -side with little Kim. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the kids in short Which pants. little Kim do you prefer? Yeah. <laughs> Start a poll. I know which one I like. <laughs> we should just call him Lil P or something. Little P. You know? Little P. Air. Little P. Lil. Lil. Uh, L. Um, <laughs> we are terrible. I'm terrible. I'm sorry. I've already hey, degraded your show. I've been back six seconds. And I'm already like, fucking <laughs> network's going to get phone calls again. <laughs> Fuck. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. It, it was me. Fuck, everyone knows who it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I, if, 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 if James ever recorded that Shaggy song, it would like last like five seconds. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going to be the whole song. <laughs> <laughs> then you did it around the counter? Sure yeah, that. yeah, it I was did. Me. I did it right on the fucking counter. That's right. Did you say it was an hour? Yeah, it was me. Yeah, yeah. I fucking filmed that it. It was, was a me, live man. stream. Of course it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is it? Did it on the P Hub. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that was me. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Take it to the hub. Whatever oh, you I've say, you. I've it was me. I don't even care. I'm going to preempt if all I, the, that shit. It was me. If I've heard I did that video, though, you don't remember when Ray Charles had his aha uh -huh girls? Yeah, mm -hmm. you got that right. Well, oh. Ray, Ray. Uh -huh. that was the greatest the biography Lex. of any musician ever. That Ray movie. Oh yeah, was yeah, that was great. Oh yeah, it was brilliant. If I yeah. did that video, like this, I said, yeah, it was me. Like this, I'd have like like three uh huh girls, like just like running around, like this, and just pop around the court. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Over there. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got I've got a little bit of. Uh, have Have you aired this yet, James? The uh, your, your, uh, yeah. Well, you had this up on YouTube, the spits, black bald spits. I don't have any memory of any of this. <laughs> okay, so this this was the one you did, and I and I and I tweaked it a bit. So I'm gonna, I'm going to show this because I think this is pretty cool. It's uh, three minutes of James uh, doing some uh, beat poetry, as they call it. Oh, cool! Let's check this out. I don't I think remember. You'll like I don't this. remember this. Who pays the last Who soldier, the last for, soldier die? for die? Who pays his widow Who pays his widow for trying to cope, trying with, to cope with, with life that's now life hopeless. that's now hopeless? And I watched that. And she I watched that. She like quivered just like erotica. skin and erotica. She played the harmonica. She played the harmonica. The song was always so sweet, so sweet, sweet and cold. Hagen does. Hagen does. Her mother was an mother independent, was an independent socialite. socialite. And she wouldn't cite the wouldn't fight between what's wrong and right, and right, and right, and right, and right. My advice and my advice. Don't play games in the hard knocks when brainwaves get twisted like hair twisted like hair braids. Like hair braids. Or rich folks who share maids. Share maids. The scene fades into the fifth into the fifth floor. Caught in withdrawn shades. Switch blades in a left hand. In a left hand. In a right. In a right. A short and eight. She's enraged at her mother's payback. Stay facts, she says. Only her reflection stares back with eyes black. It was like a vanity like attack. A vanity attack. Based on her sanity, Based on her sanity of fact. The small things that small break things down, that break foundations, down like foundations. Like cavities to plaque. The hell hath no the hell fury, no like, fury, a woman fury like a woman scorned. By the men who make, the men who make their hearts reborn. The sanctified themselves, 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 themselves with souls, souls, souls are being but torn. But this girl had a library, had a library of text and a mental. And she flexed wonder to the men who are bowed down to this monumental. She was like love's instrumental. A backdrop for something special. The crack spot for life's essentials. She completed a perfect vessel. busted. God must have blessed that she was a gift of poetry. She would even move. She would even slow move in slow mo. It seems. It seems like dreams. Like when dreams clouds when blow. Clouds over blow the scene over the scene. She was an entity. For second, she had beckoned me to question the one fantasy of ecstasy, but prophecies they strengthen me. Cause now, man, I see a temptress that's sent to suffocate my being, but I won't look back. I'll stay on track. But this girl was stacked like chips and crap games, and my conscience went sightseeing. I stabbed my best friend in his back and watched him tumble like a fat guy extreme skiing. Paradox of a human being. My thoughts, they're twisting like dreadlocks, if you know what I'm seeing. Like a rarity of complete mental clarity before she stared at me, made a raise in my disparity, then sanctified herself and went from virgin to vulgarity. 
making me feel trapped in a place between heaven and hell, between good taste and a bad smell, freedom, jail cell, I can hear church bells, I'm frozen like William Tell, the apple of my eye as I look inside the wishing well. But she was bleeding, badly bleeding, bleeding till her heart stopped beating, needing my name and hating my game, but what do I do? I put a pox in you and shocked you and dreamt that they stalked you and killed you like cops do. I can't remember who I'm talking to. I mean, I used to feel like we were like the Capulets and Montagues, meant to be like harmony. Yeah, like gods of love and mythology. But now my memory is groggy, my eyelids, they drip soggy, and I'll still visit you in the cemetery when the night's thick and foggy, but I remember the way your brown hair fell gently off your shoulders, but pray tell. Now I'm the widow. And you? You're like that unpaid dying soldier. And the night took hold in the apartment on the ship floor. But forevermore, I lie awake and create my own translation of the strings and swords. Whoa. There you go. I was really high. That was my bad. I, <laughs> I, I had mixed minus on. I, I was on a lot of Adderall when I did that. <laughs> I really was. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Good, it's weird. It's, good. it's weird listening to that. It's, it's, well, especially when you put that weird echo on. Don't ever do that again, okay? <laughs> oh, that was not intentional. That was a mistake oh, okay. on my part. I apologize. I thought you were live mixing. It was, was like, not. No, 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 no. I, I just I forgot to switch something on there in the background. It was my bad. I wrote that, by the way, twenty four years ago. Do you oh, remember really? Inspired it? Yeah, I do. Uh, it was. Uh, do you remember I had Doctor Draw on the Eugene Draw, the violinist? Mm hmm. He wrote, um, or he freestyled like a three and a half minute violin solo. And um, I chopped the first minute and 15 seconds of it and wrote to that pattern. And, and just like, it was such an amazing uh, emotional piece that, um, that I ended up writing, writing that. And Did so you ever I, overlay it? I, I, I tried to do it to like a beat when I was younger, but I wasn't. I wasn't a polished rapper back in the day. Like I, I would squish too many syllables in bars and stuff. And I wasn't, um, you know, as, as, as polished or whatever as I am now, but I'd love to try to do it again. You know, like what if be, there were no beats? It was just to the strings. It was just to the strings and he couldn't repeat it because it was, it was such mm -hmm. a, like a, an emotional solo that, I mean, he could have probably it would take him a while, but we didn't bother trying to do that. So I just wrote it to the one time thing that he did. And oh, so you never record it. No, I didn't. I, I never recorded it. Oh, because yeah. that would have been cool to then overlay well, that over the. I'm sorry. the The piece exists somewhere in someone's okay. hard drive that isn't mine. <laughs> gotcha. Mm. But, but yeah. Well, I mean, this way it's a, a piece of beat poetry, a la the original version yeah. of the, the 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 revolution will not be televised. The original version was just beat poetry with no music. The music came long afterwards, so it's very Gil Scott Heron like, if you ask me. Yeah, that's my personal. I love doing opinion. that type of shit because you, you have so much more freedom you're not boxed in in bars mm -hmm. you know like i don't have to like you know make sure i land on the kick or the pocket i can just do it yeah the I four want. four timing or something More like theater. Yeah. all right uh gentlemen do we have a show let's wrap it up mm -hmm. we do indeed we do all right we do thank you guys yeah. by the way i appreciate I you letting me uh barge oh. in here like this oh no it's glad to see you time. glad you're doing glad you're doing better buddy uh, i was worried about you there um but I'm, I'm glad you're doing much better, and and uh, we'll get together soon, and uh, we'll we'll do some collaboration. All right, buddy. Yeah, let's do so. Let's do it. Why don't right. I leave so you guys can do your normal uh, way that you guys sign cool. off? Okay. So thank you again. I appreciate right. uh, both of you Take very care. much. I love you guys both, and I'll see you Friday, Douglas. And me, and you probably right. too love as you well. Too, yeah, I'll pop in Friday for a bit. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. See you. Wow, uh, not the show we expected. No, but you know what? Sometimes that's again the beauty of this medium. We can go madly off in all directions. Yeah. And and sometimes magic happens. I think we had I think we had a lot of uh, really poignant moments today. And I think we furthered the the discussion on on mental health and the importance of paying attention to it. because uh, I'm I'm still in the middle of something right now. So uh, and, and it's something that we need to talk about more. And, and I've said this in the past, but I'm going to preface it again, that my buddy, uh, John Melky, 
uh, from uh, btr.com, blasttheradio.com. He, uh, he's on Twitch and he, and he tunes into our show when he can. He uh, has a, what he's got called the BTRV, and he's going to be going around um, Ontario, possibly around the country, uh, doing live, live podcasts and recording podcasts. It's, and it, it, the whole thing is talking about mental health. And he wants to interview different people and talk about how they get through their day. And it, it's pushing the narrative forward of we need to invest more healthcare dollars in mental health. And 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 let's stretch it a bit to where I went earlier with the uh, this little uh, paragraph from this young woman. You know, every time there's a mass shooting, they always talk about, oh, it's a mental health issue, but. Nobody has health care coverage for mental health in the United States. I shouldn't say nobody, but there's millions who have zero health care coverage, mm-hmm. zero insurance. Mm-hmm. It's all out of pocket. And I can go and see a therapist tomorrow, but it's $350 an hour. I, yeah. I can't afford that. Yeah. So I, I'm entitled up to, I think it's eight, $1,800 or $2,000 a year in therapy but trying to get into see a therapist that will accept my insurance. Now I, I, somebody did provide me with a lead and they've matched me with somebody, but I, I have to get everything worked out with my insurance company before I can do anything. Cause they, they want me to pay up front and I'm like, okay, I can probably do that. Let's, let's see if we can figure this out. So, you know, I, I had, I had one before, but that all changed cause the company got purchased. We got a new benefits package and everything changed in that. And anyway, that's my issue to worry about. Mm-hmm. Not yours. No, I don't know. Wait, we still care, right? Oh, and I appreciate that. But, you know, it's, it's just something I got to work out. Mm-hmm. One, one other thing, one other pile on the yeah. pile of work that never ends. It just keeps going higher and higher. It never ends. <laughs> and see, the camera follows me, so. <laughs> Pile gets way up here. <laughs> way up here. Way up here. Let me go. Look up. Look up. Look way up, and I'll call Rusty. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny that you should mention that. I'm because our, our friend DaCosta. Yes, that's why I did. Oh, that's why you did it. Okay, because I was looking for an opportunity to show you. You just gave me. <laughs> Long live the friendly giant, CBC, CBC News, CBC News, Q recorder solo. So. You got uh, the friendly giant talking to uh, mm-hmm. Jerome and Rusty, and all of a sudden, I'm not sure which one of them to say that, but that might be Jerome, I'm guessing, because <laughs> he seems mm-hmm. to be have his neck stretched. He goes, who the fuck is that? Now, this is friendly giant nights, kids. <laughs> mm-hmm. Friendly giant after hours. And then, <laughs> as the friendly giant is rearranging the little rocking chair he got a little picture of skippy running in the conservative polo he was wearing that got him slapped with the compliance order from alexis canada going i'm telling elon musk on you <laughs> oh, yeah. costa i love you <laughs> Early one morning. <laughs> oh, man. So, yes, we hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of the Daily Beaver podcast because we loved li- uh, we loved listening to us. Because <laughs> we loved listening to us. We hope you did, too. <laughs> we hope you loved listening to us because we loved making this for you is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> It wasn't a Freudian slip. <laughs> oh, uh, well, okay, let's admit it. We do love the sound of our own voices. Well, of course I do, because <laughs> I have a mellifluous speaking voice. Who wouldn't want to listen to me speak all day long? My goodness gracious. <laughs> ah, remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. That was sarcasm, by the way, yes. just to make sure yes. for the people listening, yes. just the listeners, that was sarcasm. You couldn't see the look on my face. <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody understands that. I'm not, I'm not nearly that vain. You're so vain. You probably think this cast is about you. You're so vain. <laughs> don't you? Don't you? Don't you? <laughs> Remember I that- always thought the song was written about Mick Jagger because he sings, he sings back up. He's the guy singing, you're so vain. He's in the background. If you pay attention, you'll, now that I've told you about him, him in it, yeah, go back and listen to it and you'll now. Na- Oh, that is Mick Jagger. But until I told you that, you didn't know. 
Trust me, go listen to the song later. Okay. You'll hear his voice. Now that you know to look for it, it'd be like, oh my God, it is Mick Jagger. Uh, they thought it was about him for years. It was never I always, him. I always heard that the song was about Warren Beatty. That was the other rumor. She said she'll never reveal who it was written about. She'll never tell. <laughs> I also like that Janet Jackson sampled it for one of her songs. She, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like I, I like that. Carly Simon actually came in and, and and joined her on that duet for to do that as well, which is kind of fun. From her Velvet Rope album, I, saw, I can't remember what the title. I saw. Was. I've, I I follow Carly on on TikTok. Um, I, I think she's having health issues. Okay. Uh, I don't know if she's had a stroke or something. Um, I think she's having health issues. I, I, that's all I'm going to say. If, if you go see her out on, on TikTok, you'll understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sadeka. Yeah. She, she knows, she knows what time it is. Janet's version was amazing too. Yeah. I agree. Uh, if you really Janet like, also sampled Joni too. Remember? Yeah. On the, on the same album. Yeah. With got till it's gone. Little, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, big yellow yeah. taxi is what she sampled yeah. it from. Exactly. So uh, yeah, two uh, two albums with two great samples. Uh, if you really liked this podcast, you can find us on Cryer Media Network as well as all Beaver Grizzly friendly platforms. Stars and reviews are appreciated. And of course, if the kids are wondering why it is I have Janet Jackson on my mind, it's because she's on tour and I was looking up to get tickets. But uh, unfortunately, I believe I'm on stage on the, the day that uh, she is, uh, the one day she is in Canada. <laughs> World tour, Canada, one day. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Reach us on our Facebook page, uh, reach us on our Twitter feed at True Eager or by email at True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com. And uh, there is someone that uh, sent us a note uh, on it, and uh, we will read it uh, eventually on the show. Uh, but uh, I want you to know that we did get it. Thank you very much. Uh, you can subscribe to us via our pod page if you want to get anything from us as soon as it's fresh off the bandwidth. For that, you go to podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver with a hyphen between each one of those words and well then you get everything that we've got as soon as we got it for you and if you happen to be watching because you like video and you happen to be on our true north eager beaver media incorporated youtube channel well then geez why don't you subscribe and do like kit elaine always recommends smash that button because that helps us us big time helps us, us helps us out big time i'm stumbling as i'm getting to the end uh we i think we hit 225 so uh thank you very much kids we really appreciate that we can't do this without you and your kind and generous support so if you feel that we've done a particularly good show uh and if you're watching well um you can scan the qr code that i'm sure mr grizzly will put up right near his head very soon you just take your cell phone and uh, get a little click on that and that will bring you to our coffee page and if you happen to be listening well then you take your beautiful digits those dainty beautiful digits on those lovely lovely hands that you could do paul mall of commercials with because they're gorgeous. provided you have hands and fingers provided you have hands and fingers if not then you use your voice and give a command mm -hmm. and you ask to go to our coffee page which is ko-fi.com slash eager beaver all in one word lowercase letters ko-fi.com slash eager beaver all in one case lowercase letters and that's where you can make your donation and make sure that mr grizzly has some coffee so that we can have some coffee talk no big whoop Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying until next time, dear kids, it could be a tough world out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself. And unfortunately, it does not look like there will be any tennis for me today because it's about four degrees Celsius and it feels like zero. Yeah, it's miserable. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom for us before we go, please, sir? Uh, take care of your mental health. Um, do what James did. If you're having a hard time, make the call. If you need to spend time mm -hmm. in a hospital, do so. Uh, put yourself first, mm -hmm. choose yourself. It's okay to be selfish. I know it's not easy. It's okay to be selfish in this instance. Yep. And I know it's not easy. I know it's very difficult. Believe me, I'm, I'm there, you know, but, um, this too shall pass, but take care of yourself. Yeah. I'm, uh, and may I say, my good friend, um, I am impressed. Why? Because you are not 
going through the best time at the moment. And you did this with a level of composure and poise and professionalism um, that exceeds most people when they're having a good day. I so. don't know about that. I've just it's I've been dealing with this for forty three years. It's just how I exist. Take the compliment, my friend. Okay, it's true. thanks. And everybody here, I'm sure, will agree. Hmm. Thank everybody you. watching, I'm sure, will agree. Um, uh, and thank you, uh, Kits, for uh, indulging us, uh, taking a bit of a turn on the show, going in a different way. Uh, it wasn't all politics. I tried to sprinkle in some in a little bit because James has some interesting perspectives, particularly on the darker, more controversial stuff. So, um, But I'm glad to, that you uh, appreciated this uh, this show and uh, the turn that we took because um, you have to understand, kids. Um, yeah, we want to do the political literacy piece and we want to do the media mm-hmm. literacy piece and we want you to be engaged in your democracy and we want you to get involved and we don't want you to feel powerless and we want you to know that, you know, there's a place for you on team Canada. Uh, mm-hmm. but first and foremost, we want to build community, right? None of that happens without a bunch of dedicated people willing to say, you know, for example, Hey, you know what, we're going to do this for democracy this time when we're all going to sign this position or we're going to, we're going to phone bank for someone or we're going to, you know, or we're all, if you live mm-hmm. in this electoral district, we're going to, you know, you know, this is the person in second place that has the best chance of defeating someone we don't like, let, we're going to coordinate or, but to do that, you need to build a community first. And you got to get a, a group of people that come here that have somewhat like mind, not all the same, but someone mm-hmm. like, somewhat like mine who care about each other. Um, you know, I mean, we've seen it, you know, we've had people, kids that have been going through life things and they talk about it on the chat and they get support uh, from everyone else here. Um, we're trying to form a community because I keep on saying there are many more of us than there are of them. Mm-hmm. And we're quiet and we're passive. Or the we just say, majority. you know, we trust that the system will handle it eventually, but these things don't happen alone. These things don't happen alone. They happen because, you know, as that saying goes, right. Never doubt that change can be brought about by a small group of dedicated people. In fact, it's the only thing that has. So I want us to be that small group of dedicated people and mm-hmm. maybe eventually not so small. So I, it I is think there's, there's here, kids. Um, it matters. And, and, and I thank you. I think I think there's more of us than than people realize. Like you say, it's the silent majority, and uh, I think we will remain silent no more because we've seen too many abuses. Look, and we all understand that it takes time to get legislation written, passed into law, change the laws, and and, and it can be done, uh, but sometimes it takes years. And in many cases, right now, we don't have years for somebody who is suffering um, on ODSP. They don't have years; it's day to day. So be mindful of that if you could. We need to understand that, yes, it takes time, but sometimes we need to act quickly and accordingly. Quickly accordingly. Yeah. Not and accordingly. Quickly accordingly. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. As the, the, the now moment sometimes requires action that's a little more urgent. It just does. Yes. Right. So, uh, kids, um, that you join us, and that you've agreed to be part of our little project, right? You've willingly come and said, yeah, I'm into this. Um, well, thank you. Thank you, because it's, the nation needs people like you. Mm. Needs people with open hearts, open minds who care and who don't vote only for their own selfish interests, but who understands that when they vote, it also affects other people. (sighs) From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying until next time, dear kids, it can be a tough world out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly words of wisdom. I got no more today. All right. No more today. Um, I'm tapped out, man. Kits, um, because democracy is something you do, I know that I always say, to, or lately I've been saying to write in and all that, but um, today, take a day off, 
I mean, if you there's something pressing, please do write. Let your voice. But take a day off and do something nice for yourself. You know, every now and then, you need to step out of the game to do something for you. Because you're no good to anybody else if you're completely depleted. And That's the true. world is better and the nation is better with you in it and active with your sleeves rolled up and getting your hands in the dirt and making stuff happen. But if you need to sit out, think of it as a relay. If you need to sit out a leg of the relay, pass the baton to someone else and we'll run with it for a while. Take care of yourself and then come back to the race and we'll hand you the baton again when you're ready. Self-care. There's nothing more important. Always take the time for it. Make the time for it. Never apologize for taking time for self-care. All right, kids. Mr. Grizzly, please roll the credits. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Just a little happy dancing to let people go off the show with a smile. See you tomorrow.